Hello and welcome to another episode of Front End Horse Live. I have been looking forward to this one for a while. We have Dan Spratling with us today. Dan, how is it going? Hey, I'm good. Thanks. How are you? I am great. I'm actually, I, I've, I've been better. Uh, I just realized down <laughs> below, if you see building better agency sites with Next.js and Prism, Prism. <laughs> ah, get beat, beaten again by not uh, thinking through long titles. See, this is why it's important. <laughs> That's the topic of today's discussion is why it's important to test short titles, long titles, long names. You got to test them all before you ship your UIs. That's the key. Yep. <laughs> this is a cautionary tale. Um, it's, it's all right. It's just a running theme. You, you did this last week too. Wait, was <laughs> was it too long last week also? Not, no, not the title, the list on the side. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it went <laughs> more props and it was just, yep, it was broken on the side. Exactly. Um, so there is an I and a C and an exclamation mark just next to chat. But anyway, uh, Lucas is here. Luxonata, good good to see you. Well uh, well done for coming in chat. No, just it's uh, well well met. Well, uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, great to see life here and Mike and Amit was here. Kevin, welcome. How you doing? Uh, and Dan... Great to have you in chat also. So yeah, Dan, <laughs> Dan is in chat. Um, but Dan, you are kind of prolific on Twitter. And that's where I, I kind of interact with you, with, with you most, I think. I think that's where m most people might know you from. Um, mm -hmm. And you, over the past, I don't know, I guess, how, however long since I've, I've known you, you've been doing freelance work and being very public about um, how you build and... Uh, what you're working on, and I, I, I love that about you, where you're not um, keeping your trade secrets to yourself and only um, showing things once they're done, but you're showing the process, you're showing um, how maybe negotiations are going, or or how you speak to clients, or how you get new clients, and the design process, and then the development process, and then and then the final product. And I think that's so valuable to people, and it's been cool to see. Over the past like two 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 years, I'm guessing, um, you go from solo freelancer to now, as every politician loves to to <laughs> describe you as, a small business owner, right? Someone who mm -hmm. now has a team and and in an agency. You got Skyward Agency uh, that you've just launched within the past like few months, um, and it's just been awesome to see that progress and to see you constantly um, building in public and bringing us all along for the ride. Um, what do you think is is like the the real value in that? Like, like, like why go to that extra effort of not just sitting down and doing your work, but like showing it to the world and 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 tweeting about it and being very vocal about what you do? Um, I guess like for me, it's not really any extra effort. Okay. That's the thing. Like for, so boilerplates and stuff like that is that we're going to be talking about today is stuff that we are doing already in the agency. So why not share it? Why not give it out to the public and be like, well, this is what we do. It might not work for you, but if it does, feel free to use it. Go ahead. Awesome. Like, and how is that extra work? That's not extra work. You just uh, then have a tweet about it. <laughs> why not? <laughs> True. I mean, I, for me, it, it definitely like starts to feel like, oh, and then I have to take a good screenshot of it and describe it and <laughs> like... I, I think I think maybe for you at this point it's it's like second nature. Um, but I think that um, I I I appreciate what you put out, and I'm going to share with the chat your Twitter um, and also uh, the Twitter of Skyward Agency, which is see it says uh, May 2021. So yeah, so actually a bit longer than I've I I had in my mind. Although the last two years don't count as real years, they've been. <laughs> weird pseudo kind of everything is super speed <laughs> everything's been really fast and slow at the same time um mm -hmm. but yeah i can actually show that over here uh, but yeah so you you have your agency skyward digital and then your your own personal twitter account um what we're doing today is is is, is what you just kind of touched on is that um you've been public about building uh building websites for clients with your agency and also with your uh solo venture or 
or, or, or like at, when when you were just a freelancer um mm -hmm. and you've developed kind of like best practices or your your own nice way of doing things and it just so happens that um that it, that currently seems to be Next.js and Prismic with Slice Machine to build build pages out with slices. Um, and you've got a really nice boilerplate that we're actually going to be getting into today using to launch a, a, or, or, or to, to kind of bootstrap a, a website without having to set up all, all the small pieces and get up and running nice and quick using Slices, using Tailwind also, using Next.js. Um, you also have a storybook in, in, integration. Like there's a lot that comes mm -hmm. out of the box with what you've got, and you're also putting this out in in the public for everyone to use. So it's this 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 video is going to be a cool way of like showing people how you work, but also providing this boilerplate and saying like, hey, how, here's how you can go and and build with it from a design and uh, make make pages, make slices, make components. Um, quicker and and easy easier right <laughs> yeah and hopefully this should showcase kind of how we start an agency and i know prismic offers um maybe a slightly more straightforward boilerplate but but for more general use and this yes. is kind of a bit more specific to our purposes or skyward's purposes um and yeah hopefully we can kind of showcase how an agency builds a website and how we've kind of tweaked our designs to work into kind of development aspects and then kind of bring everything together and make it super easy that's the intention yeah. anyway. We might find out it's very difficult. <laughs> we might. And that's the, that's part of the experience. Like I, I said before the stream, like you aren't, um, you know, you aren't required to be here as the perfect all-knowing expert. You're just sharing what's worked for you um, and how, how that's going so far. My, my lighting, my personal lighting is a little funky and just trying to fix that, tweak that. I don't know. I'm like pretty blown out. I'm just trying to figure that out real quick. Um, but that's not why people are here. People aren't going to be complaining about that. Uh, if Alex is a little <laughs> blown out, there we go. It's a little better. Um, yeah, they are here to, to learn. So do we want to dive first off into, um, kind of just the, the designs just to kind of see like, like, like a, a, a super brief overview of, of, um, what, what we're going to be building, not getting into it too deep yet. I, I think, I think that might be a good spot to start. Whoa, mm -hmm. Brent, thank you so much for uh, the subscription, my friend. It's been a great six months. Um, and he's liking the looks of Dan's wall art. Agency logo is sharp too. <laughs> Brent is a fan. Thanks very much. Good to see you, be one mind. Um, awesome. So yeah, w where do we want to start here? This is the, com okay, so this is, is, is this kind of the full website, like at a glance, just, just to kind of give people a sense? Uh, yeah, so let's start with the, the website. Um, I'm also here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is this is kind of our approach for building, um, building our website designs. Um, so we're kind of starting at the end, and we'll be working backwards. But what we have is a, currently a finished design, um, and I've got light mode and dark mode here. And this is going to be the new designs for actually this Skyward website. So this is kind of what we're going to start building today. Cool. Um, I've laid out some stuff. Um, we've got pages here. Um, I think if you look at the other link I sent you, there's more pages, but we'll just focus on the homepage for now. Um, and you can drop and change these components around. And that's kind of one of the things that I was struggling to, especially when working in previous agencies and trying to figure out how the best way of designing sites is. And for context, I am now a designer, but up until I went freelance, I had done no design work. Uh, this wow. is relatively new to me. Um, but I always knew as a developer, the frustrations of having designs that don't match or don't align with how development works. Right. Um, or the complexity of, of things that are very specific to one page and then can't be reused across the rest of the site, which just like doesn't work in my mind. And I think most developers will find the same thing where it, it's, you want things to be as reusable as possible. So over, and it's taken me probably a year and a half to figure out how to do this best, but or at least best for me, um, going through and, and breaking designs down into ways that basically replicate how development works. So what we have um, in these designs is basically slices. So Prismic calls them slices. They could be page sections. Depends on what you like your terminology. Yeah. But we have these slices that have content in. You can go in and edit the content in the designs, and we'll be able to do this in code as well. Um, 
and yeah, you can move ooh, you can move them around. I select the right thing, um, or you can just completely delete them and change how the page looks. Um, and then what I've also got here is variations. Um, nice. And again, this is prismic terminology, and you can kind of switch between how these oh, individual cool. slices look within the page. Got it. So, um, so just for um, the audience, Dan, we can't see it because I'm just like a guest in in his thing. But over here on the side, um, Figma typically has like like you know a whole bunch of stuff that you can edit ab about the selected item. And there's like a variations drop down that Dan, I, I assume, is toggling there. We are just seeing kind of a blank thing there. It could be, be because we are just. Why is it? I really want to see um, just give you improved comments. Um, I'm sorry. I've just given you edit access, so you should be able to see it now. Oh, cool. Uh, ask to edit. You can only view. I might have to like, refresh it one sec. I think refresh works in Figma. Nope. Yeah, I might have to like, come back out and back in, but I don't I don't have like that link it, super handy. It's fine. It might pop in eventually. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Um, but yeah, so just so people don't like, so, so people aren't wondering why is that changing all of a sudden. But yeah, you can switch with variations in Figma and prismic slice machine which we're going to get into has a similar thing where you can set up variations for one slice you might have a cta slice or like an image gallery slice but give your editors the option to choose between just a different variation like maybe this is a full full screen image or a you know a small image off the left whatever the, the variation is um, and that way you don't have to recreate the wheel a thousand times Cool. Um, so yeah, so we, we, we kind of have like a brief overview. We, we, we've touched on how we're, we're going to be building this page out and it has multiple slices in it where, um, we've got like, 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 let's see, we've got call to actions. We've got a contact, uh, slice, right? We've got he heroes. We've got, um, specific project slices, team slices. So there's, there's a bunch of individual like big section components here that we'll get into a couple. This is like several days <laughs> worth of work for sure. It's not going to be yeah. in this two hour stream, but I uh, just want to kind of give everyone a brief overview. This is the site that we're going to be building towards. So uh, you have a boilerplate that should make this process a lot easier to get up and, and kind of bootstrapped with, right? Yes, we do. Um, awesome. And you should have the link. So if, yes, if you want to get started there. Pop over, make sure that I, um, I, don't, I don't know if I have it up right now. So give me one sec to actually grab that. Um, what is your GitHub account name? I just sent you a link. Oh, you are a lifesaver. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. So uh, back to this, we are up and running there and yeah. So uh, I'm going to drop this into chat as well so that they can kind of poke around if they want. Um, yep, that should be that. Awesome. So uh, yeah, so, 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 so basically for a bit of background for, for the chat, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if they care about this, but I'm going to give it to them because that's just how the <laughs> show works. Um, Go for it. But, but Dan was like, hey, I, I, I would love to share kind of like my best practices and my way of working with people. Um, could, could be do a show. And I said, absolutely, uh, that'd be phenomenal. And uh, also we we kind of wanted to show off like Prismic best best practices. And if you don't know out there, I work at Prismic. So um, Angelo Ashmore, who actually made uh, uh, most of the Prismic kits that um, are used within this library, um, worked with me last night and helped us to like, to, to bring a really good boilerplate better in terms of prismic i'm not saying like we we we, we didn't you know <laughs> like dan's was phenomenal already but but like we we just brought it up to the newest kits um because i think that um they are so much nicer to work with compared to the old ways like the old ways there were some parts where that they weren't like fully like the way you do things in react angelo came through and and made it so like that's the react way that you build and it's just a, a, a really nice experience Personally, speaking for it, I really like the new Prismic kits. Um, Angelo's done a phenomenal job, and um, he was a huge help revamping um, the ways that the, the the new kits plug in. So shout out to Angelo is what I'm trying to say here. 
But yeah, um, and you can see from the the commit history that a lot of the changes we've made weren't weren't that recent. Um, as it is agency life, there's always things that are more important than your own things. <laughs> so, I I said yeah. to you in DMs where like uh, at my previous agency, the, the place I worked before Prismic, uh, yeah, we we had aspirations of having like a brand new updated <laughs> boilerplate, and it's like cool, that's what I'll work on next. And then oh, we got a big client that just came in, we can't can't uh, uh, have you work on that. We've got to jump to the client. So like, yeah, getting time to work on the boilerplate stuff or, or, or like the sharpening of the saw is always kind of tricky <laughs> when you're also trying to like keep a company afloat. So I, agency life is very much like that. Is, is anyone in chat at an agency? Um, I would be curious to hear if you have similar experiences or if, if you, if, if you have a good way to manage that, because I, I, I wasn't able to make that work perfectly when I was at an agency. So now that I'm out, uh, I I still care, but maybe Dan might want the advice on on, on how to how <laughs> how to build and maintain at the same time because it, it can be tough. It can be tough to balance that. Um, so this is the one that I was working on last night. Let me go ahead and um, I'm gonna drop out of this folder and I'll make this a little bit bigger. So uh, what I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone this into or or do you use the template way? How how do you use this? So I was just gonna clone um, the the thing, but walk me through it. Yeah, so I usually I usually start from um, a template. So I, you're not seeing it on your screen, um, but on my screen I have a big button that says use this template. Okay, um, and so that's probably I, because I own oh. the repo. Also, because so <laughs> I, 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 I only recently started um, using a, a second user account for streams because I was just using like my personal one for a while. Let me actually open this up in, in my personal one real quick, uh, just because I'm not logged into GitHub and logging into GitHub because the security and stuff is kind of a pain. So use this template is here. It's because I, I, I was not signed in. So I can use this as right. a template. Let me go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm going to do, um, what we want to say, um, stream demo, uh, let's say skyward demo stream. You can do that. Hey, Godswell. Good to see you here. Great. Great to see you. I think I saw you in a Twitter space last night or the night before too. Also might, I, I, I might be wrong. Apologize if I am, but anyway, it's great to see you here. Um, you've, you've jumped into the uh, front end horse discord chat before. It's just always fun to see you around. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, description. So uh, I'm going to leave that because it's optional. So we're going to move forward and <laughs> generate our repository. So do you want to kind of talk through uh, what this has for us? What, what besides like Next.js and Prismic does this actually have in it? Why might I reach for this boilerplate? So essentially, this sets things up in, in kind of a very quick to use way. So we've, we've gone through and stumbled into some of the issues that we find when working with Prismic that um, things like when you're working with Next.js, um, having the option to have links that are both internal and external handled by a single component, um, having testing built in directly, but not just Storybook, but then also kind of Storybook with documentation and, and linking that through to Cypress and uh, not to Cypress, to Chromatic. Um, there's too many technologies in this that I just mix them up all the time. <laughs> um, and we have also got some Cypress tests in there too, kind of just setting up the foundations so that okay. when people start working with it, they've got something to look at as a previous record, basically. So if you look through, there'll be like um, a couple of pages created. There's some custom types there that, that are already built. Um, there'll be like one slice that you can use as kind of an example. It's It gives you those foundations that you've got one one thing to work from so you can kind of see how we do it. I like that a lot. Yeah, so when I was going through this, I thought that was a nice touch to to not, don't give me a whole bunch of stuff to delete, right? Like I, I think mm -hmm. that's annoying when you set up a boilerplate and now you have to spend the next 10 minutes deleting 30 files. Um, but also don't leave it so that it's like the world's your oyster, figure out, your you know like, like like how to build things out like if i have to create a pages folder if i have to create like all this stuff from scratch i i i heavily agree that um starting from <laughs> one component or something is is a really good way to go um hey there's a figma link that we can have the access oh interesting good good, good uh, question yeah yeah okay cool 
Do yeah. Do you want to drop that in in, in chat? Yes. Um, oh. There's more than one Figma link. Multiple. Um, I mean, hey, chat. Multiple Figma. You links. are you are getting bang for your buck here. I'm saying, like, uh, yeah, lots of Figma links, lots of GitHubs, and uh, thank you for asking, Sir Beerus. I appreciate it. Um, cool. Uh, so. I've cloned this down um, and yeah, we're seeing slices. We're seeing, uh, you got some utils. I, I, I liked this, like it's simple, but I'm like, oh, that's just a nice build in function to have the calculate read time. Cause this doesn't like come out of the box with next. It's not like the biggest thing, but just like those small things. I'm like, oh, that's nice. I, I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was, that was, that was a cool thing to include. Um, it tends to be stuff that we find uh, we're doing again and again, just gets shoved into the, into the templates. Yeah, or into this boiler boiler thing. No, I, and I think I think that's great. Um, I think uh, we we had Adam Argyle on the other day uh, talking about open props, and that's why he made open props. It's like this, like these things that I keep <laughs> doing over and over again. Let's just make it a prop, and I think that's and, and 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 then share it with people. And I think that's just some of the best development stuff. Isn't like wow, you create you you created the next React or the next view, but instead just like hey. I, I'm saving you a half hour of time every time you submit up a new project. So that's that's wonderful to me. Um, so one thing I wanted to touch on real quick, uh, package JSON, no, not, oh, oh. So we've we've downloaded the code, right? We've, we, we've got it here. The next step we kind of have to do is connecting it to a Prismic repository, right? You asking you shall receive. Yes. Love it. Um. I think it's already connected to a Prismic repo. Yeah, it it, so, it is. Um, uh, but, uh, I, I should have asked you for but, access. Yes, to this we one. haven't got one set up. Um, yes. Yeah, I can give you. I can give you access if you'd like. But then you'd set. have to. Or do you want to start one from scratch? Um, is this one all, all, all already on a team plan that you can add me? Because if if I would have uh, thought of this, like like good a question. A, yeah, I, probably not. <laughs> so we can start one from scratch. It doesn't take too long. Just so we can show people how to do it, so that they're not um, spinning up their boilerplate and then and then waiting for Dan to invite them, right? So like, l let's make <laughs> yeah, this as good, as good for uh, people watching now and in the future to do on their own. And uh, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Um, cool. So uh, right here in sm.json, this is the, the connection to our Prismic repository. Um, we're going to change just that URL uh, once we... Head over to Prismic. So let's see. Do I am I even logged into Prism? Uh, yeah, I'll I'll stay on my personal account for this one. Getting getting a little sloppy with all the uh, all the Chrome profiles now. Alex, you're falling apart. So uh, <laughs> if if you don't have a Prismic account already, it's free to sign up. It's free to do pretty much everything we're going to touch on today. So no worries there. Uh, once you're signed up, you can head to your dashboard and create a new repository. Um, and come up with a repository name. As you can see, I've come out with a whole bunch of repository names. For this one, we'll do, um, I, I, I feel bad doing Skyward, but like, uh, yeah, Skyward, I'll, I'll make it very specific because once you use a repository name, chat, um, it's gone it's, forever. It's taken. So I, I don't want Dan being like, <laughs> I wish Alex didn't take the Skyward one, but we're gonna make it very specific. <laughs> Skyward demo front end horse. If you need this in the future, you're, you're out of luck, Dan, sorry. Uh, that's okay. I think I manage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's gonna say we're a developer and that we're using Next.js, and we are on the free plan, so we are good to go. Create repository, and then I believe it's going to ask us once we click into Skyward demo. It's going to ask us what's the language. It's English, and then that's pretty much it for now. We just need this URL here, this Skyward demo front end horse bit. That's what we named it. And we're popping back over and we're pasting that in there. And so that is now pointing to this repository that we just made. Um, mm -hmm. So the next step and, and the, the, the reason chat why like this is kind of like Dan and I is because like we're kind of doing like a, a tandem stream at least for like the some of the Prismic stuff. I, I just want chat to not wonder like why is... Why is Alex doing doing like all this stuff? <laughs> so just just so that like you know the the initial Prismic setup I can I can walk us through, but then I'm mm -hmm. I'm gonna be well not hands off I'm gonna be hands on keyboard listening to Dan. So just so Chad understands how this is gonna kind of flow, 
Um, because that's kind of what what you were proposing in in the initial idea, right? Where it's like it makes more sense to be a bit yeah, more in, like in a, tandem. a collaborative thing. Yeah, but also um, not just being collaborative, but also the, the idea is that hopefully people can spin up the repo and not need me or you to guide them through how to do this. Uh, it should be hopefully relatively straightforward. Um, cool. So if you can figure it out, then. I mean, you do work at Prismic, so that's a bit of a, a bit <laughs> if I can, start, but uh, I don't work at Prismic anymore. If you can't, a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, so while I open Slice Machine, um, do you want to kind of like, like? I'd be curious to hear your explanation of Slice Machine. Not to put you on the spot, if 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 you want to say, ah, I'd rather not. That's fine. But like, how <laughs> how how would you explain Slice Machine to someone to, to like a new developer that you're inviting on the team? Uh, Slice Machine is basically. It's it's a way of um, coding up. It's it's like it's coding up your components um, so you can create a, a CMS or a backend, um, but without having to use code. Um, so what Slice Machine does, um, at least my understanding, which I hope is correct, is that it kind of gives you a UI. It gives you visuals that you can use to then go in and click about and create some places where you can add titles and, and descriptions and images that you can then upload through the prismic dashboard um and you can do this in the prismic dashboard too but using slice machine kind of gives you that that full control it's all stored in your repo um and then you can push it to prismic and as hopefully as you'll see alex do relatively soon um he will be able to push the slices that are already created and they'll just appear in his repo yeah, I think that's a great ex explanation. And uh, I, I forgot that we didn't do like a yarn install yet. So this is not the process to start the <laughs> Slice Machine chat. This is, oh, right, we, we have packages to install. So we are doing yes. that. And then we will boot up Slice Machine. But yeah, I, I think you did uh, a great job of explaining it. Basically, it is a local development environment, allows you to um, uh, use version control to back up your slices, back up your content types. Um, and yeah, it, 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 it works the way developers like to work is, is how I kind of feel about it. Where before, um, building out things in the UI and having to hop back and forth, oh, sorry, in, uh, on prismic.io and then having to hop back into my code and like that jumping back and forth and the, the, the wiring up of data to content types and to my components, it was just a bit circuitous. Like it, it would, it would I, I would have to. Yep pipe it too much but this kind of doing it for me and just the data flowing into my components the way i would expect uh it just makes it makes the process of wiring up a component that needs to display some data to the cms so much easier and that's always like just the part of development that i really don't like is that initial like <laughs> all right i'm console logging out what is the shape of this thing mm -hmm. All right, I got to pass it through. What's this thing called? This is just like we they, you get little code snippets and you're you're good to go. All right, so we yarn installed and now let's run Slice Machine. So one of the most difficult things about doing it without Slice Machine as well is that because Slice Machine runs locally, um, it then kind of pushes up to Prismic and syncs all your data that way once you're ready to do that. If you're working in a team, um, building components directly in Prismic and then working out who's up to date on that repo and who isn't is quite painful. I know there's a CLI now that, that does that and that's how Slice, that kind of Slice Machines runs on top of that. So you could do it manually, but Slice Machine just handles it. So why wouldn't you use it? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah no, I completely agree. So uh, we are we are logged in. Yep, we're good. So it's now running on localhost 999 and there we go. So these are the custom types and the slices um, that you kind of bootstrap us with, right? So that's yep. the, the, those are the files that we see. So the slices, we have call to action and navigation. Slices, call to action, navigation. And then the custom types, we have quite a few more, but that's because, well, I, I, I guess you can talk through like, like what, what each of these are or just kind of touch on them more broadly. Yeah, so a lot of these are page types that we use. Um, so homepage, page, blog category, blog, like all of those uh, pages that, that will appear. And once you kind of put some content in there, they will then show up with the user. Um, they shouldn't have any slices in. They might have one of the, the template ones, but either way, it doesn't really matter. They, they currently 
are set up so that the page will work, but then they don't have any content in. Um, and then the few others, we've got header, default SEO, and footer are global components. So these are not slices, but they're not pages either. They're things that, that will appear on every page. So you want one place where you can go in and edit them. Um, so they're, they're used, if they're built as custom types, um, and one thing I would love from Prismic is to be able to separate these into categories. Yes. <laughs> no, uh, absolutely. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, so you have one place that you can go in and and change your header and it will appear appear different across the entire site. So these are kind of already set up so that we don't have to think about them. I think that's great. Um, yeah, like, and, and I completely agree. We are thinking about best ways to do things like SEO across the site because we realize like you shouldn't have to roll your own version of this. This should be kind of a thing that's built in and is just, um, yeah, something that we make easier for you. Absolutely. Um, and, and it's also something that like we, we bake into, I, I think in your page, you have it here as a tab. I think this kind of stuff should be baked into boilerplates and into pages and things like that. So completely agree. Um, for chat and for everyone else, and, and even for, for you, Dan, um, Slice Machine is something that we've been working on for a while, but we're still working on it. Like this version is 0 0.1.2. So like it's still, um, it, it, like it's it's ready to make for production sites and everything, but it's, mm -hmm. it's not absolutely perfect. So um, just small, small caveat, but, Absolutely, Dan. I, th I think you can vouch for it that like building with it now, uh, I, I, I think it's absolutely ready to to build sites with. I think it's a be much better experience than just doing um, kind of like, I guess, the, the old way of doing Prismic or vanilla Prismic, whatever you want to call it, uh, the non-slice machine way. Um, I, I think going this route is just, it's it's so much nicer. I really enjoy using Slice Machine and building out things with it. Yeah, me too. And it like it basically provides all the functionality that you'd get in the Prismic web experience anyway. So yeah, yeah. If if you like use building this way, then definitely go for it. And I think most people will enjoy it. Yeah. Um so what so so the reason I gave that little caveat is because right now we uh or, or eventually we should have like a push all to Prismic button, but we don't kind of have that thing yet. <laughs> so what we're gonna do right now is essentially take the the models um that that we we have here so like the the home page is essentially just a json file that shows the shape of that right so like as seo that's what we, we we just saw in that page uh thank you for the for the follow welcome um and uh you know just just the shape of of, of that that content type of, of that custom type we're going to push what's now local up to our new Prismic repository here, because right now this has no custom types, no slices, nothing. So we're just gonna have to go through and just do a little bit of leg work up front. This in upcoming versions will be easier where you have like a push all things to Prismic that are not already pushed, right? Like a save all kind of feature. Um, we're working through that. We've, we've got a long feature list, lots of stuff's coming. So this is just a quick like upfront thing that you won't have to do every single time. But when you're starting from a boilerplate, currently this is just gonna be what you have to do going through and pushing. So this is a little bit of boring upfront work, but uh, also not the most painful thing in the world, in my opinion. Relatively, um, like if you were to go into Prismic, you'd have to copy code. You'd have to copy the JSON code that you just showed for every single component. So just being able to click a button is much easier than the other way. Really <laughs> so good it could point. Be nicer, but it's much better than the op other options. <laughs> then, then, then the history, right? Like, like then, then what yeah. it was for sure. Um, I mean, really, you might be able to show really good how, point. If you go over to Prismic now, you might be able to just quickly show kind of what I'm talking about. Yeah. So we just pushed all those up, and then yeah, if 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 you were to create new, first of all, it's gonna ask me for a name, so I'm. I'm not gonna bother because like it, it gets a little funky when you start creating types in in the editor and in Slice Machine. It's not gonna break anything, but it just gets a little weird and um mm -hmm. yeah. So but yeah, you so here in blog post we've got the, the JSON editor. So you could create a new type, name it, and then paste code in here, and that's what you would do if you were to start from like a boilerplate and didn't have that already set up. So yeah, what we just did, not having to copy all this stuff in, completely agree, much, much faster. Um, cool. So yeah, so like it took me longer to explain the caveat than it did to just click like <laughs> 10 buttons. So honestly, we are, 
we are fine. So now we have all of our custom types up on our uh, Prismic repository, but we haven't created any yet. So do you want to go ahead and create some? Uh, yeah. So what do you want to create first? Oh, actually, let me, uh, hold on. I have to turn off a plugin because this is, this is something that I'm playing with. Give me one sec. I need to turn that off. That's <laughs> not, yeah. A little, like, you. Behind the scenes Prismic <laughs> stuff that we're just, you know, goofing around with. Sorry for the confusion there. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, so we can create one of our custom types. So we, we can see that uh, homepage, page, socials, all these things come from here. Homepage, page, socials. Um, mm -hmm. So what should we kind of start with? I think we could create a page maybe. Okay, cool. Because that's probably the most flexible type that we could that we, we could create. Right. Um, and excellent. You can you can already see that it's got the uh, the um, call uh, call to action. Yeah. Slice already and, in there. And it's got three variations too. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we don't we, need any of them. But <laughs> fine. Um, hey, Nuha, welcome. Nuha is here. Good to see you. Uh, and no apologies needed. Um, cool. So we we we've got our page uh, here. So. What do we think? So we, we we are working off of this example. Do we want to make a team page? What do we have pages set up or is that in, in, in that second link? Uh, that's uh, we have lots of pages in the second link. Cool. Um, or I could just like I could literally build a page on the fly and you could code it if you want to, because the whole oh. beauty of the, the template in the way it's built at the moment is that you can do that. You can just drop Drop, um, that works for me. Together. So these are, wait, no, ignore that's, those. Uh, that's on the, the left side. Yeah. Down a bit. Marketing yeah. website. Cool. Here we go. Those uh, are good resources, though. So are those for your developers to like get the hang of Figma a bit more? Uh, yeah. So it, it's it's documenting the kind of the links and and everything that's inside of these files. Okay. Um, they aren't fully up to date at the moment, um, but. Huh? That's that being said, nothing this ever is isn't finished. Yeah, <laughs> nothing's ever fully updated. So no worries there. If, um, if anyone's been looking through the um, the website file, they'll see that there's a few like um, warning signs, the pages that then just don't have any content in them. That's because they aren't finished, um, which it. is fine. We still yeah. have enough to go with. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so if we head over, oh, no, wrong place. There we go. Excuse me. So um, let's make this an about page because you you have like kind of an, an about here. So mm -hmm. the UID that we're doing here is um, going to be the URL. So we just do about, right? So like when someone types skywardagency.com, is is that the URL? Mm -hmm. uh, slash about, yep. this, this would take them to it if we were building up the real page. And right now the only slice we have is a call to action. So we will choose that. Um, and then we get these fields. If we, Kind of want to talk through what we're looking at here. Yeah, so this is the content that will show up inside of the the slice or um, on the page. So if you do, you want to switch back to the Figma file? Yeah. Or can you do side by side actually? Yeah. If there's I enough think, space. Uh, let's see, how do you close out the? There we go. Uh, press. Uh, yeah. Got it. Got it in one. Um, so typically we would call this this first section on the right. Um, this one. Um, a hero, but okay. call to action works as well because it's it's a very similar layer. So we have the title, um, and you can see that that oh it's not highlighted for you. Oh hang on, am I not? Am I? Can you see me now? Yeah. No. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so this is the title. Um, okay. And that will match with the title over on the call to action, cool. and then we have a description below, um, and we have two buttons. Uh, one of them is a primary button, which is the the bolder button, and then the set one of them is a secondary button, which is the more faint button. Um, and we have labels for those buttons, but also we need links for them to go somewhere. So we have two fields for each of those. Um, and one of the good things about Prismic, and occasionally also a bad thing, is that there's no required fields. So if you don't want a primary or a secondary button, you can just leave the content out. If you want to create a call to action without a description you can just remove it um and the cool. designs hopefully will follow that that as well so if we can kind of 
tweak things that didn't move as I was expecting it to, um, which is fine. We can figure those things out as we go. Um, but yeah, awesome. things should hopefully uh, yeah correlate as as we go. <laughs> I I think you explained it well. So yeah, so like basically like within this this box here, this is a slice, and this slice is the call to action slice, and it matches up to here, and we're just adding the data here that's going to be eventually piped into something like this. Like, 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 like right now, the component isn't going to look exactly like this, but that's that's the one-to-one -one relationship. And then elsewhere, we might have this our story or this like team images and CTA slice, and we would enter the data, maybe choose the images, right? And you would continue mm -hmm. to build out like that and adding slices in as needed and they will show up here and we can continue to build out the page. And the best part is people who aren't developers can build out the page and you can ship a whole collection of slices. And, you know, if, if this wasn't the Skyward website, but was instead a website for jewelry for, you know, someone who's creating jewelry, they could continue to build out marketing pages, whatever kind of pages they need and never need to call you in and be like, Hey, can you move the, our story uh, <laughs> part down below here? And then you have to be like, yeah, but it's going to cost you, you know, 250 an hour or whatever. And that's like, oh, never mind. Right. Like you don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> they, they have the power. They can move these, um, these slices around these sections of their site. And that's really like the, the, the beauty in that. Yeah. And that tends to end up leading to happier customers as well, because they are spending, when they spend their money, they spend it on you doing actual proper development work that, that requires you to spend time on it, not just moving things around because they can't figure out how to do it themselves or they can't do it themselves. Yeah, totally, totally agree. Um, and, and like it's happier customers after the fact, but also like closing deals going into it, right? Like, Hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a, a, a site that's fast, custom built, but also gives you that page builder experience where they can go in and create their own things. Um, so as I was talking, and sorry, a, a, a lot of this is like um, second nature or just like I've, I've done it so many times. <laughs> I, I, I hit save and then I hit publish. And uh, so mm -hmm. now this page is accessible on our API. Will Johnson with a prime sub. Will, good to see you. Uh, I believe Will Johnson might be coming on this stream quite soon to teach us a little bit of frame or motion and i am hyped i am i am very hyped for it frame or motion is so cool uh and, and it's so cool but not as cool as will johnson so it's going to be it's going to be a competition is, <laughs> is kind of what i'm saying um so yeah i'm pretty excited for that will great to see you uh oh yeah it's going to be a good episode so if, if you're not following uh make sure you follow because you don't want to miss will johnson's episode also um Oh, and Paul, Chris, Luke, thank you for the raid. Wow, welcome in. Three people coming in. Uh, Andre from Prismic. Andre, good good, good to see you. Uh, I know you. Ooh, Frame Motion with React V Fiber. I don't know if it's going to be with React V Fiber. We'll have to ask Will Johnson. Um, but sorry, we're, we're, no competition. I already went all Will. You you have the keys to my heart. Flattery <laughs> is is my weakness. Um, all right, so there's a couple more things that, that we... We have to get up up before we check this out. And I'm going to explain to you, Dan, why. Because Angelo and I made some changes yesterday to your boilerplate. And we are we are mm -hmm. happy to change them back, but like I kind of want to talk through this because <laughs> it's 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 a bit of a technical thing where um because it's it's a new library, it's gonna behave a little bit differently, right? So what we did was we mm -hmm. you know let me go to pages. Uh let's go to UID because that's where that's gonna come in as. Um, so it used to be, uh, import, uh, okay. So it's, it's, it's the way the client works now. So it's, it's a new client. And for people who don't know Prismic, the client is basically how you request documents, your data, whatever from Prismic. Um, it's, it's a really easy way to interact with the API. Um, and Angelo and Lucy have been working on it and making it better. And it's it's really nice now. It just it just acts in slightly different ways. And Dan, I'll kind of show you the, the main way. Uh, it is in prismic.js. And so first off, that that is a change from prismic configuration.js because primarily, like Angelo kind of said, and, and I agree, it's not a configuration file. A configuration files usually export, like here, if we look at um, next config it exports a an object right 
uh, if mm-hmm. we look at Tailwind config and exports an object. So we kind of went, it's it's not a config file in that classic sense. Let's drop it and go with Prismic JS. Um, and then the main change here is that uh, we're being more explicit about it, it. It used to just be client, but now it's create client, right? So this function actually allows you to create a client, and then inside, if, if people are familiar with Next, inside your get static props, we create the client, and there it is, and then we make these calls. So hope everyone's with me so far. Sorry if that's a little bit like boom, 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 boom. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. I, I want to check out Paul Chris Luke. Hello. Nice to meet you guys. We just finished working on some web app stuff ourselves. Your stream looks great. Thank you, Paul. Uh, great to have you. Uh, let me do a quick shout out to your stream, please. Chat. Uh, Paul Chris Luke. Um, yeah, please give Paul Chris Luke uh, a, a, a follow. Great to have you and your viewers here. Really appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, so we are now querying for these documents. Now, he, here's the only change. What you used to have um, here was you, you, if, if this doesn't exist, just return an, an empty object, right? Only thing is mm-hmm. the way it's set up now, um, this will actually throw an error intentionally if that document doesn't exist. And uh, the, 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 the rationale here is if your client de- deletes their SEO type, you kind of want the page to break, right? Like if they delete yep. their their header type, you kind of want the page to break. If if your page doesn't have any of these, you don't want mm-hmm. it to just like fail quietly. You 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 want it to break. So what you could do if you if if you disagree with that, right? And and I think it's totally fine that you build your pages the way you want. All right, uh, Copilot's getting a little ahead of us. Or it's just getting a little <laughs> too big for its britches. You you could do a try catch, right? You could wrap this in a try catch, assign these different, uh, assign these to empty objects, um, and and handle it that way. So if you want to change it back to the kind of like fail silently, um, just wrap it in, in in a try catch. But for right now, um, we we just kind of went the opinionated route of make it die loud so that your client mm-hmm. goes, oh no, we don't have any SEO. And it's not like six months later that they call you and go, hey, we haven't had SEO for like six months. What's, <laughs> why are you bad at your job, Dan? Right? Like, you know, yeah. immediately, oh no, they messed up. MX chose VJ, mm-hmm. good to see. <laughs> so <laughs> always comes in with the puns. Love it. Um, so that's just the explanation there of why we need to set up a couple more documents just so that they exist. Um, I don't know, Dan, I would, would, would love your take on that. Having been like on, on, on the ground with clients as, as well. I know Angelo comes from an agency background. I do too. You are in an, you are running an agency. What's your take on, yep. on, on that kind of approach? I, you can just, while you're talking, I was trying, I was trying to think of, of ways where I wouldn't want it to, to fail loudly. Cool. Um, and I can't think of anything because everything you're asking for at this stage is going to be super important. Um, Got like, it. The only thing I can think of maybe would be something like blog categories. Maybe you wouldn't want it to fail loudly. Instead, you just show all of the blog posts, but then like that's a very specific use case. So you want to change it for that as opposed to defaulting to failing quietly because that one case exists. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I like I, I was on the other side, I'm, I'm easily swayed is what I'm, I'm, what I'm about to say. I was on the other side <laughs> of like, arguing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't like errors. And also setting these things up beforehand is, is a little like, eh, that's not super fun. But yeah, if I, I've had it before where clients wipe out um, an entire important section of their site or they don't have a thing. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it would be better if I got that call today than a year from now. And they never want to work with us again because <laughs> they deleted a thing, but I didn't put the guardrails up, so to speak. Right. Um, yep. We also need a so blog. Page. So so for for chat to understand this a bit more, um, some of these are repeatable types. So so as as we as Dan cre- created these types, some of them are single, some of them are, are repeatable. Um, Dan, do you want to kind of touch on like why some of these would be repeatable and some would be single? Yeah, I mean, generally, singles are usually things that that must exist. Um, tends to be my case. Okay. Um, so, like, yeah. So, 
if you've got the homepage, uh, if you don't have a homepage on your website, something's probably going a bit wrong there. And you're not going to have um, there two. There are some, some situations where that might not be a case. And you're definitely not going to have two. Right. Um, but there are like general page types like about, but then that could also lead into kind of, um, it might be services or it might be like there are kind of just general pages that you could add in that you would want to be able to add lots of different page types for. Uh, blog posts is a great example of, of things that you would have lots of that all look very similar, but the content's mm. different. Um, so that's where you would use your repeatable type. Cool. I think you explained it perfectly. Yeah. Just it, it, it like those things can, a, after you've used the CMS before or after you've, you've done certain things for a while, it can kind of like, feel second nature but i think it's tough when you're first starting out to say like like as you create a, a new custom type do, is this a single or a repeatable you go ah uh, i am not sure <laughs> which i should choose right um but yeah th these yeah. are all singles for that reason these are something that like like the socials that's going to be used once across everywhere twitter we're going to just link to the web and this is going to be skyward digital is that it? Uh, Skyward Agency. Agency. Thank you. Cool. And we, we you know, you could fill in the rest, but we're just trying to get uh, a quick <laughs> up and running one. Uh, it, it just want to show the page. Default SEO. We're just going to say Skyward Digital. And not a lot has to exist on this page right now. We just need to make sure that the page exists. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Um, and then socials, footer, do we have footer? We have header, we have default SEO. Um, and do we have the homepage? We don't have the homepage yet. Let's get the homepage in there. And then we should be able to look at something. So yeah, let's just create a call to action. Skyward home, just so we know that this is up and running and working. And then we can get into like the actual building it. But I just wanna, I, I want people to kind of see uh, it going. Slice machine gang, I'm gonna Yo! be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly how much of this is actually going to work just straight out of the box without connecting other things up, but we'll see. All good. We we will find out. We are on an adventure <laughs> together. Um, mm -hmm. We got Andre and uh, Samuel Horn in the chat. Uh, also, Nuha. We got a lot of the Prismic gang coming out. Love it. Skyward Digital's tagline isn't to the moon we riot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a really good one. That's good, yeah. Um, all right, so we've got that going. Um, let's just see. I'm gonna start a new thing. Oh, and actually, I have I have a little script that if if we have time, let's let's add it where you just hit a keystroke, and it can kick up like um, slice machine and next dev and storybook all with one quick command. Re oh, nice. Remind me at the end if 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 we have got time. Uh, but yarn, run. Dev, <laughs> I forgot, forgot the way you start things. <laughs> did I open that? Yeah, there we go. All right, cross your fingers, chat. Let's see if it works. What did we forget? If anything, I don't know. We'll find out. Is it throwing an error? Nope. Build page slash. Let's see. First, first time it boots up. Next has to like go through. Oh. It's so working. okay so chat i know this doesn't look like anything but this is actually the win this this is actually a success <laughs> i i know this is like well that, that didn't work no this did this worked perfectly mm -hmm. the only thing we we need to add a um a slice to this but look we've got our skyward home um we don't have any text or anything down there because we just wanted to fill it out and get it working yes brent that is exactly the the energy we're going for yes be one mind <laughs> um but yeah so this is this is actually working just just trust in the process, all right? We just wanted to make sure that everything was up and running. Um, and we, we, we got Skyward Home there and we should theoretically have about. Cross fingers, chat, meet Skyward. We specialize in user experience. So nice. we, 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 we don't have a link down there at the bottom. So that's probably why that uh, button is not showing up. But this is up and running and uh, fixing this weird gap is going to be a super easy fix because all we need to do is go into our is it in header it's a navigation yep and then um oh you have a primary button link that's awesome so navigation and we can do about right and then link we're going to link to a document because it's something inside here 
um, we're going to link to the Meet Skyward. I, I, I guess I can go in and call that the About page, but we're going to link to that page, mm -hmm. publish this, and then that slice zone is going to be gone, chat. We're going to instead see About. And it's slight, slightly prettier. Trust me, th this is a really solid <laughs> boilerplate that gets better the more you use it and the more you fill it out. I fill it in the bare minimum just to get here. But this is this is working. This is working. I, I mean, keep in mind that we've been on call for an hour and we've been chatting for most of that. And we yeah. still have a working website now. So <laughs> yeah, it's not no. doing too badly. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, we, we've been talking more theor theoretically about it. Um, just kind of like what what we're going to be doing, how how it's how it works more broadly, um, but yeah, we have a Next.js website hooked up to a CMS, no less. Like, I want to point that out again because we didn't have to go in and tell anything where this data goes, where that data goes. I didn't have to pipe anything through. I didn't have to make a call here and then boop, 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 pass it all down and make sure that it's in the right spot. Um, we are up and running with a a nicely styled, just from the typography alone, um, boilerplate that we can now continue to build out with with some things. Um, so yeah, we, I, I know this doesn't look like anything, but this is a win. Me trying to explain a 50 out of 51. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. No, but but I, I do just want to say like, you know, uh, just console logging sometimes is like, that's a win. Like I was just able to get the, mm -hmm. get the thing through and see that, yes, it's being heard on the other side. That that is a win. So I do want to say uh, we're we're making good progress. So where do you kind of want to go from here in terms of uh, in terms of building? I mean, should we continue to to, to flesh out the, the, those pages that we have already, or it's yeah, yeah. Why don't, let's make a slice. Okay, I love it. Uh, I don't so, mind which slice. Feel free to pick. All right. Um, you know what. <laughs> uh, which slices don't we have in here? So we pretty much don't don't have any of them except for like a CTA, right? Um, yeah, we've got just the CTA. We don't have anything else. So maybe we want to go for like tools cool. or Love features. I'm, I'm assuming something that's not too complex because it'll take too long. Yes. Especially agreed. if we're trying to style it up and stuff as well. Yeah. No, I, I think this is perfect. Our favorite tools. Um, let's do this one. I, I love it. Um, all right, so can you walk me through how we're like like now my like prismic getting it up and running um, shirt <laughs> is off to, uh, or hat is off? Why am I taking my shirt off? That's not what you do. You, you wear hats. You don't say I, I wear many shirts. But honestly, <laughs> the hats thing is weird if we want to investigate it. But we're not going to anyway. Let's, <laughs> let's keep moving. <laughs> um, um, so. First things first, yeah. Go back to slice machine, and we can we can if we go into the slices on the left, we can start making a new slice. Awesome. Um, and is this big enough? Yeah, that should be a bit, bit, bit better. Cool. So uh, make a new slice. Mm -hmm. All right. Slice name. What would uh, you call I've that? called it tools in the in the design. So let's call it tools for consistency. Cool. And here we we, we could create multiple slice libraries and kind of like section our. Slice slice libraries out and like organize a bit more. For this, we just kind of need the one library. We can just put it in our general slices library. All right, cool. So now, what do we want to do here? So that's created um, title and description already. Um, and maybe you want to just quickly show that, like, you can actually see a component for this straight away. Cool. Like so we haven't slices. done anything. Tools. Ah, uh, so we're we're getting a a an icon. That's only because we we've named it tools chat. That's not that that's mm -hmm. not like a feature or anything. That's just uh, <laughs> fun coincidence. If you called it something that wasn't tools, it would it wouldn't have an icon. Correct. Yes. Um. Or if you called it yeah like lib or something, it would it would have a different icon. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> um. Yeah. So in tools, we've got index.js and model.json. So we already have something that matches. Um, what we're seeing there. So we have a structured text uh, with a label title. Here's a title, and that is a rich text field. And we also have a structured text, like a rich text field um, that is called description. So yeah, we, we have the model saved here. And then in index.js, you kind of get um, spun up with a default React uh, file. 
Now, Dan, there's a small caveat here because the the libraries that, that we're using are a bit ahead of where Slice Machine is currently creating these templates at. We just need to go in um, and change this to a different import because we, we no longer have Prismic React JS in our package. We now have um, it's at oops, that's not it. It's this. So it's at Prismic IO slash React. And this actually changes to Prismic Rich Text. So just a a a couple changes there. But generally, how do you how do you kind of handle this component? Do you like um, modify it? Do you usually, got it? usually when I start, I end up deleting everything that's in the file. Same here. <laughs> yeah. I I pretty much Yeah. So it's a great way to see exactly like how your data syncs up straight away and, and see how Prismic is pulling data out of your component. But because I work in a very different way, and if you look inside Call to Action, you'll see that the, the way we set up code sorry, um, is slightly different to that. Um, so what we actually do is we create a, a map. So we use Prismic to kind of, this file is, is the one that Prismic generates usually, but we've just mapped components to, to um, other files. And then if you scroll all the way up to components, um, and I'm actually thinking about changing how this works, but for now it's 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 fine. So cool. and then inside the call to action folder there, we have our different variations, um, and that just makes it easier to to find where everything is and also to test it. I think that's really cool. I I, I kind of forgot looking at this last couple of days that that this is how you do it. And I thought this was really interesting, um, <laughs> and yeah, because you have to handle the. The, the different variations, but also you might just want to keep your components in your components folder. Um, I I typically tend to kind of like build up my my smaller components inside this file, but I think the way that, that you're doing it, especially considering variations, I think the way that you're doing it here is a really good way because Prismic doesn't create a new file for each variation. We just pass... Um, that string saying this is the name of the variation that the user has chosen do with it as you will we, we don't like impose any kind of like and anything beyond that um yeah so what this file is doing basically is figuring out what that variation is which is the the what i've called component map at the top there cool um and it's seeing if it's if it's the default one or if it's with image or small um and cool. we're not these are what's attached to this call to action at the moment in the boilerplate um we won't be using any of these in the one we're creating. Okay. Um, and then we're returning a, a variable component. And that is kind of a fancy way of turning the component that's attached to some string, to a text string, um, into a React component. But we don't know which component that's going to be. So variable com that's what variable, com uh, variable component ends up being. It's one of those three, but we don't know which one. Right. No, I think that's cool. So yeah, I, I would love to basically copy this out, I think, and bring this over to tools. Mm -hmm. Is that what you would recommend? Yep, that's what I would do. Cool. Um, all right, so we don't have any of these just yet, but we, we will, we'll have tools. Mm -hmm. And what would you- We can probably just keep the default one and delete the other two for now. Default tools? Yeah. Cool. Default slice is default tools. And then, yeah, cause we, we probably won't get to any variations, but hopefully chat can see how we would um, go with variations in the sense of um, when when the variation sh string comes in, it's, it's what we decide to call it. And maybe it's like inverse color, like uh, anything that you want to change about it. Um, in kind of a dramatic way or even a small way, you can create a new variation for it. It can have different fields. It can have fewer fields, more fields, whatever you want. Um, it's pretty flexible. So just want to let chat know. I tend to use it for um, for slight changes in the design. Okay. I, because Prismic allows like required or, or not required, like it doesn't allow required fields. You can just leave stuff out. Right. Um, I use that to, to handle if there's not going to be something in the component. Um, and then, yeah, if, if it's a different design, but, but does the same thing, that's when I use a variation. I think that's a really good way to, um, 
like a good rule of thumb to, to, to handle that with. Um, services. Yeah, so you've got like a few here where like how how would you determine if this is on the left or on the right? Would you use a variation mm -hmm. there? Yep. Cool. So it's like same same fields, same structure. If, if you don't include buttons, it's not going to break, but you have the option <clears> for buttons. But what makes it go from left to right um, is the the variation. Awesome. Uh, and the great thing about Prismic is that it remembers what you've written in that box. So you can switch variations without having to re-add content. That's you a really good point. Works. Yeah, so, so so your editor can go in, try it on the other side without having to to choose the image again, choose the, the mm -hmm. content again, add that all in. That's a great point. I, I never appreciated that. Uh, take care, VJ. <laughs> Tomorrow's f festival day. Oh, enjoy. And yeah, always, always good to see you drop in. I love it. And Ben Holmes is here saying, uh, I love renaming directories until material UI gives me a cool icon. <laughs> how did, <laughs> is that how Slinkity was made, Ben? Be, be honest. Did you somehow find just a cool icon with that? I, I, I still want the backstory. There's got to be a really deep backstory to the creation of Slinkity. Um, Okay, so we've got our call to action. This should be tools. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we need to go into components and create a new folder, correct? Yes. So we need a tools folder. Um, and then that should have an index file that exports our single tools. I think we call it default tools component. I think so. Oh. Cool. I'm going to just do a React functional component here. Is, is that cool? Yeah, that's fine. Um, what I tend to do is, again, I just copy and paste the, the code from other files nice. as my template. And uh, oh, so I would probably do, I would probably do call to action because it's our slice uh, if you go up to the top. Ah, cool. Okay. Good call. So default, go in here and copy this out. Yep. Awesome. Um, and actually, tools does end up looking very similar to um, the call to action anyway. So that's a good reference for which which files you should copy as you start getting a bigger library. Um, Perfect. Like, yeah, it, feel free to copy and paste stuff. <laughs> and a lot Perfect. of people will be screaming and in, screaming inside and saying, um, like, it, but you're copying and pasting. Can't you just like you're reusing stuff? Shouldn't you make a component for that? Um, no. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. <laughs> Hot take. No, I like it. And, and like, yeah, like in there are certain situations where you should create components for that, but in this case, because you're you're creating very different slices each time, even though they look the same, they could be entirely different. And because of that, we don't want components within our slices. The slices is, is good enough. Okay. Cool. Very cool. That's my. Um, my yeah. No. It, it, anyway. That's yeah. It's what works. Yeah, I don't don't feel like you 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 have to defend the the way that you build things. Right? <laughs> you know, like, like you're you're getting stuff done. You're building sites. You have happy clients. You're you're here to to show how things work with you. Uh, Code with Hassan. Thank you so much for the raid. Really appreciate it. Never heard of Prism. Gonna check it out. Yeah, it is um, a a headless CMS. It just so happens to be where I work. Um, but Dan uh, Spratling here, our, our esteemed guest, um, has been building with Prismic and lots of different CMSs and lots of different frameworks for a while um, and has uh, wanted to come on and show us how he builds with Prismic Slice Machine, which is a local uh, development environment tool that helps you connect your content and a CMS a lot quicker. What just happened? Oh, oh, oh okay. Hype things. No worries, no worries. Um, but yeah, so so we don't always talk about Prismic on here, just just in case, because you're, <laughs> you're you're here for the first time. This is not like the all the time Prismic, all the time. Um, but it, it you know just happens to be where where I work. Uh, it has to be, happens to be the tool that Dan uses, and it's it's a lot of fun to to build with. So um, yeah, like on Tuesday we were working co completely with open props. Um, and we didn't touch Prismic, but today we get to dig into Prismic, and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, kind of <laughs> pumped about it. Uh, can I share something I built? It'd be nice to get some feedback. Sure. Um, you, you you can drop it here, and people can talk about it uh, in in chat. I'm I'm, I'm not going to bring it up here, but you can also um, drop it in our Discord. Let me 
you, you you're free to join the discord would we'll, we'd love to have you if you're a friendly uh kind person who enjoys development uh dan is in there so i mean we're already yes, off I to am. a good start um so but cool uh great to have you asan thank you for coming through awesome love it uh so default cta we are calling this default tools right and mm -hmm. That um, and right now, this is just a copy and paste of the call to action for right. anyone who's forgotten. Yeah. Um, but what we can do, because we need the title and the description, we can keep those and we can delete links. There's no links in the design, so Good we can call. get rid of those and we can get rid of the links below. That should leave us with a title and description that are centered, which actually matches the design. We are off to a solid start. Um, so now, yeah, and this is this is what I do for most of my components. Like, it's, it's surprising how many things are either like centered text, and and you can just copy that across, or it's left aligned text, and yeah. you can just copy that across, and like Completely so much agree. matches that. Yeah, and 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 honestly, if it's fluctuating a lot, the designs might need a retouching, right? Like, if all mm -hmm. of a sudden, like you know, you got some that are centered, some are left aligned, some are right aligned, some are just full width, some are constrained to six hundred. It's like, all right. Let's get some some continuity going here because <laughs> everything's kind of feeling yep. all over the place. Cool. So now we we have this component um, mm -hmm. that we we put here. Index needs to export it. So yes, uh, it does. Let's see how are we how are we doing this from here. Cool. So you are importing them here, putting them into an object, and then exporting. Export default default seed. Oh, oh, okay, got it. So you're you're exporting the the individuals so that they can be named exports, and then also exporting a default as the default CTA. Yeah, um, there's not really much of a reasoning behind that. I when I was originally setting up the boilerplate, I had a um, heroes and stuff in the the page templates, and that's why I was pulling in components directly. Um, I don't think we do that anymore. So it's kind of just a remnant of of when we were doing that. Okay. So do you want to? do it any differently here or do you want to um you you can do it however you want i would probably just export and then in brackets default cta um get rid of the default and then get rid of the default one cool all right so we have default um, tools we're importing and then exporting so that way down here in the i think slice... you can actually cheat with that file and, and just write export default tools from i think instead of importing and then exporting i think you can just export directly okay cool I might be wrong. We will find out. Uh, I'm not getting yelled at, so that seems to be the way. Um, <laughs> have a great day, Sean. Thank you for coming through. Um, and maybe Ben or someone in the chat can let us know if we're going to get yelled at by uh, Next.js in a second. Um, so we've got tools. Uh, where are our slices? These are our slices. Here we go. So we got index.js, yes. import default tools Sorry. from tools. Seems to be working. I think this should just work. So okay. do you want to go back into the CMS? Um, have, we haven't pushed this yet from Slice Machines, have we? Correct. We have not pushed it. And then we also need to add it to a content type, right? Yes, we do. So let's push this first. Cool. And then we can we can add it to our page content type because we were editing the about page. Cool. So page. So yeah, so just for um, for chat, you you can you can build slices and then decide which content types get to use those slices. So like on a page, we wouldn't want to add a navigation halfway down the page. That doesn't make much sense. Um, but we just made that tools, excuse me, um, just made that tools slice and we want it to be able to access that and for our editors to be able to use that. So we're adding that in, saving that to our file system. So I just up updated our JSON file locally. And so we can, mm -hmm get commit that and version control um, our files there and also push them to Prismic. And now once that little spinny guy stops spinning, we should be able to come over here. This is our header. Let's go to our about page. Is, is that where we were? Yeah. Yes. So let's rename this about. And we should have two here now. Yes. So we're, we're, we're not getting screenshots yet because we, we, we didn't touch Storybook. Hopefully, we'll, we'll get to dig into some Storybook. We will. Cool. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm excited. Um, but yeah, so now we, we've got this, this second slice. And if we choose this, we should mm -hmm. have the title and description like we were, uh, like we see over in Slice Machine with 
the slice, the title description, it's made its way to Prismic IO. So this is not a local environment here. So right now, um, if if I had any editors, they could go in and start building with 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 this and adding content in, in here, right? Yeah, yeah, they, they could they could jump straight in and add whatever they wanted to. Um, awesome. And you can do this in live environments as well. We're in we're in a development environment. There's no actual content on the site, but you could be adding slices directly to live environments and editors might notice. Um, and you need to be careful if they're not production ready and you do manage to push them up. But Good tip. Yeah, you, could, you can push it straight out. Good tip. Copy as text. Let's see if that works. Nice. Sorry, Dan, I'm going to have to go with the American spelling for my version of it, <laughs> mainly to appease the spell checker. Um, and and we're, we're going to add in like in, in mm -hmm. a repeatable image type soon, right? We're just kind of building up the basic slice. Yep. That's the next step. Awesome. So just kind of seeing how we add that new slice. And then uh, the about page should have... Slice tools not found. Interesting. We okay. let's see. Um, index.js tools from tools. Slice tools not found. I am not sure why this isn't showing up. Um, do I not ha export default tools? That looks right. Hmm. Is it, is it that that? funky export that we did earlier <laughs> I, don't I, I, I could have been think wrong so I, th I think i think it, it would throw that here let me uh export default tools export default test um let me just do get rid of this because it should find this testing why is he yelling at me is that a bad Oh, oh, export default. It's, export, it's exporting default twice. Function, there we go. So now it should just ignore tools. Yeah, it's that it's not finding this. Oh, never mind. Okay, so this is how you debug people, all right? This is how you do it. <laughs> so we, 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 we've debugged that far. So tools, let's plug this back in. Uh, tests should now just be ignored. Let's see what we got. Refreshing. Oh, okay. So we just... Maybe just needed Something. a good old refresh. I don't know what it was, yeah. but this is working fine. Our our expert from before worked fine. We might just needed to have refreshed because it, it didn't have this in its um, like cache or, or whatever. So we, we, we needed to. Yeah, we were cool. too fast for, for our development server. Too fast. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so that is exactly the uh, component that we made up here in our mm -hmm. tools file. Up oh, the default one, and yeah, like we can tell because if we put exclamation marks at the end and get really hyped about it, um, it shows up right there. So just to, to just to double check because sometimes when I copy paste from somewhere else, I want to make sure that I'm not st still using the other one that I had. You know what I mean? Where it's like um, if 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 I copied and pasted this over, am I still using that one, or is this it's is, is, is this its own component now? Yep. And I'm and and. There, there's a clear separation. Well, that's mm -hmm. what I'm concerned about sometimes. Oh, Chad97 has a question real quick. Let's see. I have a question for you guys. Why no one using WordPress nowadays? And Andre says, asking the real questions. Uh, Life says, mainly because static sites or web apps are faster and more versatile and the frameworks use JS, which is a bit more versatile than PHP. You can still use WordPress as a data source, for example, or just go for WordPress. I still do for some client sites. Yeah, I uh, like... You know, I work for Prismic. I am, um, you know, I I I'm employed and love a uh, I, I love building with a great headless CMS. But um, I think tons of people still use WordPress. I, I think you know, like there are just more and more websites being made every single day. Um, it's definitely not that like WordPress is dead or anything like that. But it's just very much that um, you you might be in spaces that prefer headless architecture, which I know Dan does um, for many reasons. WordPress can do that, but I think CMSs like Prismic and like many others uh, are just are, like, don't put up any friction when it comes to building with, with in, in the headless way. 
So you you might just be in a space that kind of uh, promotes that sort of thing a bit more. I don't know. What do you think about that, Dan? I mean, WordPress still powers. I think it's like sixty eight percent of the web or something. It's that might a be lot. a little high, but it but but it's not I it's it's not totally think it off. Is. Is, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I think but, the yeah, I was surprised when I heard the statistic that it's it's gone up. Yeah, it has gone years. up. Um, that surprised me. But then that being said, there's still tons of websites being created that are headless that are that are not on WordPress. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah, like a uh, lot of oh, developers wait. talk about. Oh, okay. oh no. so it's 60% of content management systems. So like 30% right. of all websites, but then in the CMS pie chart, it has 60%. So it's still, it's still a lot. Okay. Yeah. But in, in React um, land, like if you're in a heavy JavaScript uh, bubble on Twitter or where, wherever you're getting your kind of development news, you, you might just not hear about it much. Yeah. Developers love to talk about newer technologies anyway. So, yep. That's that's why that's why we're talking about headless stuff now. Yeah, yeah, um, and yeah, I don't. Uh, not a lot of folks want to use PHP nowadays. Yeah, I don't want to do local servers and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, Alamesa, so sorry for for talking through. Thank you so much for that sub with Prime. Thank you, really, really appreciate it. Alamesa, welcome. Um, great, great to have you. Thank you so much for that sub. Um, but yeah, uh, MAMP, I don't want to use MAMP ever again. <laughs> I no. I just struggled with it so hard. But and then when I like spun up a like, Prismic repo for the first time and it's up, like, like we didn't battle any configuration stuff yet, right? Like it wasn't like, oh, I have to yeah, get no. MAMP running or anything. It was just, oh, our Prismic repository, we, we made it and we're good. Let's, let's keep moving. I hate backend development. And I, I don't, don't have to do touch it. any of it when I'm working headless. So that's yeah. And and if you want to customize WordPress beyond like the basics, you're you're getting into that PHP. You're 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 getting your hands dirty. Um, <laughs> yes, you are. So, so yeah, that's, um, that's we were job. working on the tools this. section. Yes. Yes. We still need to add images. Yes. How would you do that? Uh, so I would add um, a repeatable section. Okay. And so, then inside of that, just a single image. So choose just image here. Yep. Cool. Uh, what are we going to call this? Whatever you like. I would just call it image. I would keep it simple. Cool. Um, Add. And then, so one thing I've done with the image component um, inside of the boilerplate is kind of copy what Next.js does for their image component. Um, so I don't set sizes inside the image there. That's Instead, what I was going to ask you, um, if you, if you do anything in here. Yeah. I do not. Cool. Um, but I do make sure that images are optimized. Um, so you can save that. Cool. And Let then me we just can uh, our... link real quick a friend in chat. Kasim, yeah, here is the GitHub. So this is the starter that, that we're starting from and that Dan is providing um, for for the public and everything. Whoa, Lucy! <laughs> Lucy with the with the horse. Lucy, thank you for the sub. Five months. Really appreciate you. Great to see you, Lucy. Another uh, wonderful Prismic employee. Um, always good to have you here, Lucy. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'm I'm so hyped about chat. I'm so sorry, Dad. I'm just like, yay! That's people okay. Here. Uh, cool. So, well, you were saying we are copying the way that that Next handles images, or or at least we're going to leverage it. Correct. Yes. Cool. So we can import um, our image component, um, cool. which so is we'll... inside our components folder somewhere. Uh, right, right. You, 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 you have a built-in image component here. I forgot about that. Yes. It's very cool. Um, and this kind of builds on top of Prismic's uh, recommendation for not using Next.js images, and that's because Prismic already has ImageX built in, um, which is an image optimization service that, that caches images on a CDN. So it's off of your website. It doesn't load until someone gets to your site, um, which is a great way of doing it. And you can also use Next Image, but that I've had trouble getting that configured with Prismic at the same time. So I would recommend just sticking with one. I think that's why Prismic recommends that too. But what I've done is I've created kind of um, an image component that works in a very similar way to how Next Image works. Um, and then I import that and just set the size for the image directly in the code. Very cool. Yeah. Um, 
Imagix, if if people aren't, aren't familiar, is um, uh, Cloudinary is kind of an, an, another similar service that you might be f familiar with. Um, basically allows you to do some magical things with your images. Um, it's built in to Prismic. If you upload an image to Prismic, you're, you've, we basically have Imagex under the hood. It's a great service mm -hmm. that you get to use for free and you get to do all kinds of cool transforms on it. Like Dan, d did you use it when you worked with Gatsby and Prismic and like save yes. on the build times? Like uh, that's one of my favorite things because Gatsby, uh, if people don't know, is a static site generator that compiles everything up front and it can take time. It can take like five minutes for a site, six minutes, seven minutes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times as those numbers go up, it's because you're you're making images at this size and this size and this size and this size and this and going all the way down and doing that for like a hundred images and it it can yeah. it can add up. And so doing it like kicking that to ImageX, all they do is images, they're professionals. Um it saves you a lot of time and and money at the end of the day. So uh, one of my favorite like hidden Prismic features or or like one that we don't talk about enough, I think, is like you get Imagex out of the box. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just great. Yeah, it's great. And it's a paid service, but Prismic gives it to you for free. Yep. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know why we do that, but hey, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> what were we thinking? No, I, I think it's awesome. <laughs> uh, cool. So we're going to leverage this image component that you have built in. So we're not importing <laughs> next image or anything. We are importing, I'll just, actually just use this, import image from image. Look at me being so clever. Uh, Easy. Cool. So um, probably where, like in here-ish? Yeah, so after that, we'll, uh, we'll so we'll need um, a wrapper that, that can handle the kind of listed images that we're bringing in. Cool. So do you want to do um, a div or a so we, list? Yeah, I would just do a div. Um, cool. I'm not sure what, what is the correct access. I think it's still not a list for, I don't think it's a list for images. So let's go with a div. Just do that to get a class I try and name think about. There. I'm sorry? I try and think about accessibility. Sorry, I, tr I say I'm trying to think about accessibility and how it should be handled. I don't think lists works for images, but I'm not 100% certain. I'm not an yeah. accessibility expert. Me neither. Um, I <laughs> typically have some accessibility experts in chat, but I'm not, not sure if we have... Uh, I mean, anyone in chat at this point can can give us a recommendation <laughs> on it, and I'll take it. Um, but yeah, so we we also need to... So now to we need to pull in... Yeah. We need to pull in our items. So because we're using a repeatable, um, Prismic delivers that to us as items, I believe it's called. Um, and then we can get the image out from that array. So I just think you just need to pull it in here and it should work. I so think items like that. Uh, we can check that later. Yeah. And then if you items.map, um, and I don't remember if there's an image example somewhere or if uh, we need to figure that out. But yeah, I still, I'm, I'm, I'm going to level with you, Dan. I still do this. I'm like, I work at Prismic, but I'm still doing um return and then log in this and then seeing from there that's just how <laughs> yep. if if so because we 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 have a small separation um oh wait, wait actually hold on so slice.items.map so it should be items.map and then here we go so let's grab this mm -hmm. this is another thing i love about slice machine it just has this built in i don't have to guess and console log like if like sometimes i have to do that but for the most part, um, I don't. Um, the only reason we're not doing slice here, chat, is because we're destructuring slice here. Is, is that correct, Dan? Yeah, so on the variable, variable component that we are using in our slice, we destructure everything and just push it through as fields. And again, that's, that's mostly for testing purposes, so we're not pushing um, something that's Prismic specific into our component. Cool item.image.url, that should be a good key, I'm hoping. Um, I don't like to use indexes as keys if we can help it. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can't, oftentimes you can, um, but we're gonna use this image. Does this take all like the same fields? Yep, it should just work, I think. Cool. But again, we'll, we'll double check well, that. We will find out, that's all good. <laughs> um, all right, so that should work, but right now we don't have anything up up uh, to to look at. Um, would this mm -hmm. be a point where you start to run Storybook and build in that? 
Yeah, so we can start Storybook now and, and figure out how. So yeah, usually we would design our variations and components in. We wouldn't even fire up the, the website. We might check it's working, but we would build all of our slices in Storybook. Awesome. So, Let's, yeah, let's, let's go, go that, that way. Sorry for pushing you and... in, in, in the other direction. No, it's fine. So, uh, so Yarn runs Storybook? Uh, yes, I think so. Yarn runs Storybook is what this is claiming. Thank you for the follow, uh, Yoshi and Kojo. Welcome. Really appreciate you becoming honorary horses. Great to have you. Let's see how this goes. So one thing that's pretty cool is that... Um, Storybook can be verbose sometimes. Um, one thing that's <laughs> cool is that um, Slice Machine has a has a so let's see, it has a built in that doesn't make sense has it, an integration with Storybook so that we actually leverage Storybook to take snapshots of components. And there we go. We've got uh, our header footer call to action. Let's see tools. This is what we want. So. There it is. It's in Storybook. If you're not familiar with Storybook, chat. Um, how actually, Dan? How would you describe Storybook? How? What do you like about it? I I, I keep grabbing the, the the mic, so to speak, and explaining stuff. But how would you explain <laughs> it? Storybook is is just an integrated visual testing platform. That's how I look at it. Um, so you're you're kind of building your slices or building your components or or whatever. Like you don't have to do it in this way. Storybook is universal. It doesn't. It's not Prismic, it's not Next, it's not anything. You can use it on right. Vue, you can use it on pure HTML, you can like use it wherever you want. But the components that you plug into it, it will show you them with mock data, um, which is just kind of fake examples. And you can see that the text that is here isn't what Alex put in to Prismic. This isn't coming from Prismic. This is just some text. I think Prismic did generate this, um, but you could add your own. Yeah, S so, Slice Machine generates this locally, so we can actually find this. If we just search our repository for Streamline, you'll see that we have a mocks.json in our .slice machine folder. And so all your mocks kind of get built in, in here in this Slice Machine folder. So it's being made locally. I don't know if it's using Faker, and I know Faker just recently like got taken off. Did, did you hear that like drama about Faker.js? No, I didn't hear don't don't worry about it. I'm just curious. Okay, just it's not fun. <laughs> it, it, it's it's not like super interesting, but it's, it's just another like a uh, left pad kind of situation where like oh, a library that thousands of, of projects use is just gone. Neat. That's cool, right? right? Like, it's like oh, that's that's interesting. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's it's just generated to to make it so that you don't have to go in and um, in in input stuff. I think it's a a nice way just to get up and running with mock data and build components faster. Yeah, so we use Storybook to, to build our components because it's isolated. It's not linked to Prismic. It's not your components aren't being used anywhere else. It's only that one component and nothing else. So if there's an error with the component, if it looks wrong, if it's if something's buggy, you know it's that component that's causing it. And then when you get to building your pages, if then something is wrong, you know it's not an individual component, but kind of how they're all going together that's causing the problem. It just makes figuring out issues a lot easier. Yeah. What's the um like the development ideology? Like atomic building? I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on it right now. Like like building in smaller pieces or something. I I, I forget, but storybook is <laughs> very easy. I'm blanking on yeah. it. I've, I've given like whole talks on storybook and and like. It's not coming to me right now. Uh, but Shook <laughs> Codes is in chat. Dan, you might know them. Yeah, Shook. Shook. Sarah works with us. So, hey, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, a few days you're like, nope, doesn't ring a bell. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Great to have you in here. Welcome. Um, yeah, and Storybook is is a lot of fun to use. It, it like when when it's running smoothly, it is is such a nice thing to have it, it can be a bit temperamental for me sometimes but um once you get like a, a nice uh working build it, it can be great so i'm not seeing our image in here though uh no um and i am not sure why oh i know why because we haven't added images to is it being pulled in 
But uh, oh, have oh. images been generated by Slice Machine? Should be right. Did we save that? We we saved this slice Im items image. Push slice the prismic. That shouldn't matter. It should all be local. Okay. So why aren't we seeing it? Let's let's bring this back. Let's let's log out. Oh oh uh no. Hold on. Let's see. Let's get so, to the bottom of this. <laughs> yeah. Is is images? Is that array logging anything? It is. Excellent. Yeah. Let me make this bigger for you. So it's probably that the um, props aren't right. Yeah. So we're getting an array uh, items. Ah, I know what I usually do. I usually um, instead of item.image.url, I usually get rid of all of that. Um, so you can delete source and you can delete alt. Okay. Oh, and you um, spread and it? And then I spread it. So item.image. And then that just picks up on everything that Prismix Got did. it. Okay. So, okay. So you're looking at URL then instead of source. Yes. So that was the issue. We could have we could have done URL and then pull out the URL That's individually. Fine. Yeah, but I spread it because then you're just pushing everything that Prism is giving to you down to that um, image component, and you don't cool. need to worry about what's happening at the component level. You're figuring out, like the the tools component doesn't care what the image needs, right? Um, so you're just passing that onto the image component, and then if there's any issues or you change things, it Oops. kind of syncs up there instead. Perfect. Um, so yeah. We 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 are getting images in. Obviously, we didn't pick these images. These are once again <laughs> mock images, but like really nice that we don't have to go and find a bunch of you know mm -hmm. placeholder images and bring those in or anything. So now we can see quickly like this isn't the styling that we would want for these. So do you do you want to go uh, about styling these out? How would how would you do that? So I would manually set widths and heights to the image. Cool. Um, we actually might just want to manually set a height to these. Um, and that's, again, one of the things that I've set up in the boilerplate is that if you set a height, it will automatically figure out the width. And if you set a width, it'll automatically figure out what the height should be when it's resizing down for smaller sizes. How are you um, doing that? And, I'm curious. What's Is it in the image? Um, yeah, if you look in the image file. Uh, no, it's not CSS. It is calculating it with JavaScript. Um, if, you, if there's like an aspect ratio, it works out what the aspect ratio is, and then it figures out if you're passing a width or a height. And if you're, if you are, then if you like, if you set width and height both of them, then it will um, use both of them just as you've set it. If it if you only set one, it will figure out what the other one should be based on the aspect ratio. Oh, um, is it getting the aspect ratio from somewhere? Yeah, I've worked it out above. Got it. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's this, perfect. Oh, that's, this no, took that's me some time to figure out. <laughs> that's a really cool solution though. I, I I really like that. No, that that's great. Awesome. I, I do know um yeah, yeah, and, and, and because dim dimensions comes in off of that um image object. So you, mm -hmm. you like Prismic does send that along so you can do that calculation. That's perfect. Yep. And that's awesome. one of the benefits of spreading it is that you don't need to remember to pass dimensions in, you don't need to remember to pass because if you pass dimension like it width and dimensions dot width, that's going to get confusing for people looking at it. So don't worry about it. <laughs> right, that makes sense. So so uh, we can set the height to um, what is the image? The image is seventy. Do you do you do fifty is, works? Is, is it a string or is it? Uh, I usually do a number. I don't know if it will figure out if it's a string. So I would go for a number. Sounds good. Let's go fifty. And there we go. Very, very tiny, but it did keep the aspect ratio. So let's try 150. There we go. And let's maybe go up to, I don't know. What do you think here? 200 or what? That's five-ish, yeah. right? That's, that, that's yeah, ballpark. That cool. It, we, like when you use real images, you can figure out what the exact sizes should be, but this is fine for now. Cool. And then we can style up the, the horizontal rows. All right. You want to walk me through a bit of uh, styling? We're, we're, we're using <laughs> Tailwind here, right? Yes, we're using Tailwind. And because of the layout, so if you go back to the design, just so we can check on that. Yes. Cool. Because um, I'm sure people, I, I'm, I'm referencing the design, but I'm sure people will have forgotten what we're looking at right now. So cool. these images, <laughs> these images um, wrap down to the next line and they aren't like 
set in grids. So I would use them as, I would put it in as a flex um, so that when we get to the end here, it will then just wrap down automatically. Um, That's perfect. I was thirstier than I realized. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> cool. So right, on so the, we do flex yeah, here. Should, yeah, with Tailwind, we should be able to put flex and then flex wrap. Uh, and flex wrap will tell it to when it hits the end to go down to the next line. Um, and I don't know if we need anything else. That might be it for now. There might be some spacing to do. Yeah, maybe some gap. Mm -hmm. I'll do like six. Let's see what we got. Cool. Um, in, and what do you think? A justify center? Yeah, we need to set it so that it's centered, which cool. it, that should do. All right. And that's pretty much it. Um, so one of the, the downsides of using Prismix um, or Slice Machine's kind of built-in generator is that you don't get any control over how many images are set, unless yeah. that's changed recently. Um, so it's a it's a work in we progress. Might, We're working on that. Yeah, <laughs> but, we might just need to add um, like another image component next to this one so that we're putting in more, so we can test it. Well, what we well so, so, what, you know, so here's what we can do. Um, and thank you for the follow, uh, systemic. Sorry, uh, systemic. I, I'm I'm gonna butcher it. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> I appreciate you you being here. Um, so if you go to our mocks, we can grab these. This won't like persist. So the next time you go in and like update it, it'll generate new mocks. So don't like you know put a ton of time into this. But if we just copy out. <laughs> um, those paste them in we should get did that not work why didn't that work items image dimensions lucy help <laughs> <laughs> this is a chat well why isn't that working i swear i pasted more so you got a bunch of them in there now um is there a number somewhere that's set does do um storybook need to be rebooted to grab new maybe data. but that would be kind of a that would be annoying if we had to reboot all of storybook let's just go off it come back hmm not sure why that would not just pull in the rest weird okay i'm cooking oh lucy no <laughs> 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 All right, let's just try rebooting Storybook. So that was going to be my cool, quick hack to show you, Dan, but <laughs> I struck but it didn't out. Work. <laughs> yeah, classic. Yeah, see, classic what I would have done is just copy and paste the image component at the end there and, and just have two of them to test that if, like, if there's more, then it works. I agree. That's a good way to do it, too. Uh, and even, re <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, apparently it's the only way to do it. Why wouldn't that? I'm fascinated now. Now it's one of those things where it's like, oh, okay, here we go. Because it, it already pulled it in. That's what it is. All right. So let's, okay. Okay. Hold on. Dan, check this out. Check this out, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh boy. All right. We're going to copy this. We're going to paste this a few times. Now this should be ridiculously bad. Yeah. Cool. There we go. Excellent. That's. And kids, that's how you do it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you, you break it first and then you figure out what you did wrong. <laughs> yep. And then you claim that you got it right the first time. Um, yep. Awesome. And yeah, uh, VS Code is my favorite IDE. Uh, definitely. I, I've, I've used a few over the years, but I think VS Code's kind of just come to be pretty dominant. And JetBrains is a little too expensive and a little too overwhelming. I don't know. What do you think, Dan? Is it also your go to? Yeah, I use VS Code as well. And and when you get something that is so good um, for free, I don't know why you would switch. So Yeah. I mean, like JetBrains has like really in-depth like knowledge and like, 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 like really understands your code base well. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, the, the amount of like having to relearn keystrokes and relearn things, I just always find myself going back to VS Code to like get real work done. I don't know. It's all personal preference, though. I, I don't think there's like a best one. But yeah, for free, it's it's phenomenal. Um, cool. So now that we have this, we have tons of images. Do you want to yep. change anything about this? I mean, it's fine as it is. It does what we need it to do. It 
matches the designs in terms of like what we are looking for. We're looking for a text field and some um, a description and some images, and we have that. Cool. So now we can go into Prismic and and do you want to add images in Prismic or? Yeah, that sounds great to me. About that? No, let's do it. Um, so just make sure we, we we already pushed it, so that's good. Mm -hmm. And then um, yeah, so we can refresh this. Yeah, we're gonna need to refresh the editor. So uh, for chat, we're back in prismic.io. So this is um, hosted on Prismic. So you don't have to worry about any of that. And your editors can come in. You can call them up and say, hey, I shipped that new component you were talking about uh, that you need for the logos. And uh, mm -hmm. Prismic gives you some out of the box Pablo Stanley images um, that we're just going to lean on for now. So we don't have to go hunting down logos for all these fine companies, um, if, if that's all right. <laughs> Is is that, is that okay, Dan? Um, yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. So, what, but we'll pretend like we have them next JS, yeah. um, or we'll like let people know where what should be going there. Uh, Prismic. I think the next one was Sanity, correct? Uh, yes, Sanity, and then how how many do you want to do? Uh, or... Let's do at at least enough to wrap Storybook Netlify. Okay. Storybook, Netify, and then Vercel and Figma. And last but not least, I do love Figma. That's that's Hopefully another one. That will wrap. Well, we're we're gonna find out. I'm not I'm not <laughs> positive, but we will learn one way or another. Um. All right, so is this running? I don't know if this is running. I can't see anything. Let's find out. Local host. Cannot read properties undefined reading URL. Oh, there we go. Our favorite tools. Easy. Boom. And the alt text would, would tell us what these are supposed to be. But uh, uh, so uh, that's the other thing is we should make sure that the alt text is getting through OK mm -hmm. and being set. And it is alt next day yes obviously this is so for access for anyone out there don't do your accessibility don't do your alt text the way we just did it where it's a picture of a person and you put <laughs> totally wrong things we're just doing that for the sake of you don't need you don't need to watch us go hunt down logos we've all done that before I'm not going to do that on stream it's kind of boring uh thank you for following andre andre thank you for the follow buddy um, and I've been a bad steward of the show progress uh, checkbox that's uh, below Dan. <laughs> um, so for Lassive, welcome in. Uh, we are working on um, basically building agency sites using, and by an agency site, I mean, um, I mean in, in this case, it's, an, it's a site for an agency, but building websites while working at an agency or doing freelance uh, from a great uh, boilerplate that our friend Dan Spratling here has put together for us. So we're starting here. We're leveraging some tools like uh, Prismic Slice Machine, like like Next.js, which is the framework, and like Storybook in order to build out components that our editors can then move around and utilize. Um, and if you're not familiar with uh, Prismic, one of the cool things about it is um, if your client or, or if your editors realize, hey, we actually want the tools at the top. They can just hit this up arrow. That moves up. Tools are now up here. And we can hit save and publish. Actually, Dan, do we want to show off previews? Uh, yes, ideally. So do you, um, is, is, is that a key thing for you when working with clients? Like, is, 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 is that a big deal or not really? A lot of them ask for previews because they want to just check that the content that they, they're going to publish is right okay um and that's fair like i would also want to check it before i put it live um so yeah uh i'm not sure if previews is built in did you do anything with previews when you were changing over the um prismic stuff at the beginning you did i'm i'm not Excellent. trying to let's I'm, go for it then i'm gonna eat my words i know but hey i i i've got <laughs> you buddy guarantee it's gonna fail Excellent. because we're live but uh as of last night yeah. it was working so uh, Brent, yeah, let's get previews, the then. exclamation mark yay ready because I'm going to fail, 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 <laughs> fail, fail, fix it. And then we're going to say first time. So yeah, that's how we do it. Uh, so for this, because we're just doing a local host preview, this is kind of like just for us. 
Uh, we'll just set up HTTP 3000. And then with Next.js. Uh, slash API slash preview. Yeah, because we're pointing towards API preview and it's going to hit this and basically um, add a token, um, have a whole cookie thing. It's going to, it's all, all a bunch of stuff you don't really need to worry about uh, once you have it set up. But uh, it's kind of. I mean, of it basically magical. goes to the preview page, figures out what page it should be looking at, and then takes you to the preview of that page. Yep. You explain stuff better than I do. I'm just going to be like, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to point at things and just grunt from now on. And you're going to explain that. Is that sound good? <laughs> I'm all right with that. That sounds good. Perfect. Uh, small caveat. You have to come on every show. A new every ha- show. <laughs> new hot tossing the, the apes into the air. I love it. Um, all right. So we got the preview. And... We got our favorite tool. So the okay. reason why, why this is like a, a, a preview or, or why... Um, so the the difference here, chat, is that uh, if if our site was already pushed to Netlify or Vercel and it was already live somewhere, they got... Oh, yeah. All right. We did it. I forgot. Preview worked the first time. <laughs> I completely like botched the whole like, ta-da. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Okay. It, it, it works. Thank you, chat. You're all fantastic. They are loving the confetti. Love it. Front-end mammoth. <laughs> Um, so, uh, our best tools ever. Um, so I'm just hitting save. I'm not publishing. So if this were a live site, um, this doesn't change the way that people are seeing it there, but in our preview, uh, it will update it there. So I can say, Ooh, that doesn't look great. Actually. I'm going to go back and, and change it. And it's cool because like, this is tricky to do. Uh, mm-hmm. with with other things, especially for like Gatsby, the fact that we have live previews that you can use on Gatsby sites still kind of blows my mind that like they figured that because right? like static site generation doing live previews is just like that shouldn't yeah, work, but it's really tricky. Yeah, and and I'm like Im- impressed and I'm like tooting our horn because I didn't do it. I it it, <laughs> it it wasn't me. It's not me going. Oh, I'm so smart. I figured it out. No, smarter people than me figured it out, and I'm just like, wow, they are smart. So. Just so that's clear, <laughs> I think it's so cool that that we can do live previews. And then down here at the bottom, um, you can see, oh, it's this is this is the page that we're on. Do you want to go edit that? And I can click that and go back and oh, did that not? Am I doing that wrong? Is that? I don't know. I've I've not figured out what that that does. I tend to ignore. <laughs> Got it. That's fine. But that's good feedback for. But I usually have the I usually have the Prismic and and website open anyway, so I, I yeah the page I'm looking at. But yeah, and and it, it can at least tell you where um that is. Okay, so maybe that's just I don't know, uh, whatever. But um so yeah, previews <laughs> are are a good feature. Honestly, working at an agency, I I couldn't. I couldn't ship a, a, a site to a client and be like, oh yeah, you're going to have to publish and wait for it to build for five minutes before you can see if that mm-hmm. looks good or not. They go, uh, I like and a new CMS, please. Good, you've got to wait five minutes <laughs> to yeah, get it like, back to how it was before. J- can you just put us on something else? Because this 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 sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that that's not a good sell um, to a client. Our favorite tool. So go back to that. We'll hit save. So, uh, actually, let's not. Let's go do a release quickly. Ooh, okay. So publish. You want to do a, a release? Here. Yeah, so one of the really cool things you can do with Prismic is set up tons of pages at once that are all different. Um, And this is great for if you're doing, let's say you have an e-commerce store and you're doing a sale at Christmas. Um, You want to add like banners to every page or like sale prompts to every page saying, we have a a sale going on, Um, but you only want that to go out on the day the sale launches. Uh, you can set up a release in Prismic that just kind of holds all of those pages in their edited state. Um, and you can schedule it for a date. You can schedule it for just like, I can't remember what the other options are. You can There's a date, there's a, um, just a publish it now, but all of the pages now. And what's the third thing? Release, I, th- I think is the third thing, right? I don't but know. I don't know. wrong there? Um, uh, homepage. I, d- I don't remember. <laughs> Skyward Holiday. Home. Save. Let's see. Save. Publish. Publish it now. Publish during a specific date and time, and publish during a release. Yeah. During a release. Okay. And then we're doing the Christmas sale. So add to release. And so yeah, we've we, we've changed our only two pages over to 
<laughs> be a bit more festive. Um, mm-hmm. Thomas, it is so good Which... to see you here. Nino Pepper, always good to see you. Uh, we 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 need to catch up. You are such a, a just you just make me happy just dropping in chat, Thomas. Good to see you. Um, sorry, I I I just love our chat. I I love the community. <laughs> they're just, they're just fun people. Um, so yeah, we we we've got a couple of changes here. We can go in. We can um, kind of see what what they have, and uh, let's see. Christmas publish Alex Trost. Cool. And then we can publish them all at once. Is is that what what you wanted to show, or did you want to show something else off? Um, we can we can show the preview first. Cool. So because the difference with release previews versus regular previews is once you are previewing a release, you can then switch between pages. Um, so if you go to about, you should see the preview for the about page. Um, and I'm selling this like it's an amazing thing that I created, but I was told about it like two weeks ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's perfect. Like, it, there's so many of these features where I'm like, oh yeah, that is cool. Like, like oh yeah, like, like that, that 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 is kind of a remarkable thing that clients can kind of go through, change mm-hmm. dozens of pages, all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, it's oh hello. Do 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 you, do you want me to say hello? Is that what I'm doing? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they can go through and change multiple pages not release them, but then like, you know, stroke of midnight on Christmas, they can have it so that it's scheduled for that. Or I guess you wouldn't do a Christmas sale on Christmas, but you got it. Yeah, chat. that might not you work so well. Yeah. <laughs> Buy our stuff. Oops, it's over. Um, you might turn it off on Christmas Eve. That's a good point. Yeah, so then you would, you would schedule the follow-up going back to boring times or, or whatever uh, <laughs> yeah. for the day after Christmas. You missed exactly. it. Yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> the pages now mock you for being late. Yeah. <laughs> Um, or yeah, and and you can delete it, but yeah, the the like full site re- re- release preview is is a very cool feature. I agree. Um, okay, so we've hit a few things. I just want to make sure we're we're like hitting everything we've planned because we are at two hours. I don't want to keep you longer mm-hmm. than this because I I know you've had a booked week already. And I don't <laughs> I don't, don't want to take up a minute more of your time than than uh, we should. But let's just kind of like go through and like travel, travel back in time with me, if you will. Um, let's see. So we Work started. What we've achieved fr- in two hours. Yeah. So we 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 started from your boilerplate. We we mm-hmm. uh, we forked it. No, no. We we used this template. I'm not sure what the difference is there. I guess it just generate. I guess it um, just- use the template lets you create um, a repo within your own. Um, but doesn't fork it, it do lets that you create also? a repo directly. Whereas if you fork, um, I think it's, oh, is it still attached? Maybe it's the same thing. Oh, oh no. And so it, it says generated from, but I did get to name it yeah. something different and like create a new thing. So yeah, so there, there are some differences, but it seems like it's like nice quality of life rather than, yeah. Uh, anyway, we, we started from your uh, template we create cre- we created our own uh, and we cloned that down. Got up and running um, by making a Prismic repository and linking them. Uh, we pushed up all the default pages, or sorry, all all the default uh, custom types and the couple of slices that you had um, in Slice Machine to our repository. Started to build out some basic um, pages in our our repository. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to delete our Christmas sale. <laughs> I think we're gonna. I, I, I think we've missed. It's okay. Our, we missed it anyway. Yeah, I think we kind of missed our window. Uh, next year, next year is is our oyster for sure. Um, then we we build out a couple pages. Um, if if we could actually build out some proper. Let's see. Do we need good navigation? Let's go. Hmm, I, I I might be getting ahead of myself. Then, like starting to create new things. Why don't you quickly create a new page and show how easy that is? Okay. Now that we've got a couple slices going. Cool. I don't have any content for this page, by the way. We can just do whatever. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Um, so <laughs> this one is chat, and this is this is my love letter to chat because I can't stop talking about them. Um, chat contains all my favorite people. Description: um, These are the people that make streaming fun. All right, and these are actual images of our friends in chat. And we got life in chat. 
saw Thomas there. And granted, alt text is not not going to be showing up on the thing, but you're there in spirit, friends. Um, <laughs> you do look good in that one, life, and you're 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 taking the best selfie I've ever seen. Uh, Ludini, thank you for the follow, appreciate it. And Manea Kub, thank you for the follow as well, really appreciate it. You got Brent here. God, there's some great people. I'm not going to get to everyone, so if I'm leaving you out, I'm, I apologize. I have such like a a thing of guilt right now that I have to get to everyone. It's not going to happen. And I saw Nuha. <laughs> So sorry, pals, who I did not list, but I don't want to keep Dan here as I try to list all 70 people who have dropped <laughs> in the stream. Dan's like, man, I got to go. I'm like, but I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, Dan. You have to stay. <laughs> Just um, here at like 11 o'clock at night, still going. <laughs> and Timmy and Janet, like, just going through. Um, okay, and Header. Oh, wait, so we just built a page. I'm, I'm just... We just built a page. Um, it, it was that easy. Yeah, we just built a page that is now available at uh, slash chat. Right? That should just mm -hmm. that. Oh, we need to exit out of preview. So we're exited out there, and and right now we, we so this is just one thing of preview that we're actually working on a really tidy solution. But and you can install a button and make this easier. We didn't for this boilerplate yet. So right now it's just API slash exit preview. It's it's a little funky, but our friend uh, Nick DeJesus is working on an awesome Next.js uh, and Prismic like plugin that's going to make that uh, make exiting and entering previews so much easier. Um, but basically, we go to chat, and this should chat contains all my favorite people. We've got life. We've got Thomas there. We've got all these things. So we we have a page <laughs> up and running. Um, just like that. And then we can add it to our navigation if we so choose. That's what I was kind of like jumping ahead to do is uh, mm -hmm. go into our thing, select a primary button. I want to link to chat. That's what I want to really show off. And our favorite, or just see chat. I don't know. But that should show up just as a button in our, in our navigation. Is that what I should assume? Yep. Um, it should be styled slightly differently, I'm hoping. Let's see what we got. Did I publish that? I did publish that. Are we still in a preview? No. Hmm. Is it there? It, it, there's a possibility it might not be there. Okay, that's I would, fine. I would, it, I would double check the code. <laughs> yeah, it might just not exist there. Uh, and that's all right. Let's just see navigation. Navigation slice primary items, variable component. Right. Uh, so this is coming from nav. I, nav item with sub nav which would it be um just nav item i think Components. oh no this isn't inside the sorry this is inside the header not inside the navigation component got it okay because the navigation component is just the slices desktop nav um, is desktop nav yeah. header logo do we have a primary link primary link and link label okay should be that so it should be showing it's fine, but I think people kind of get it that we can uh, link to other things and, and just add pages mm -hmm. in here pretty easily. About, oh no, chat, link to a document. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I did not want to link to the header. I want to link to. <laughs> yeah, linking to the header might not sure. do anything might not be fun for them once they get there mm. honestly uh <laughs> ibrisau thank you for the follow welcome all right let's see what we got so we should just have an, an another link right like just like the about cool so you have about and we have chat so we just have a couple a couple little tweaks we can add to this boilerplate like um if the primary link isn't coming through let's actually look at mm -hmm. the we can go in a slice machine and see um, oh wait, no navigation. It's the second slice yeah. is going to be in. Where would that be? In header. header. Got logo, primary button link, primary underscore button underscore link. Is that what we are pulling in anywhere? Desktop nav gets data passed in. Primary link slices navigation. So it might just be that it's not using the underscores. Right. That's what I'm, that's my hunch. Primary, let's, yeah, we can log it out here, right? Let's see what we get. 
let's see what we get. I want to debug this before we go, if that's okay. I know I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> of course, yeah, that's fine. Taking up more of your time, um, but okay, we got link. First publication date, title. Am I looking at the wrong thing? Navigation slice primary. Oh, chat. There it is. Okay, uh, so. Hmm. Primary just should have a link on it. So primary, we're passing that in. We're spreading it. So we have link and title that should be going into our variable component. Our variable component is nav item, right? Um, it should just be nav item because we didn't choose a yeah, uh, with it should be nav item. Um, oh wait, no, this is navigation. We're looking at a content type. I think it's going to be too much of like a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think I can debug this in like two minutes. Yeah, that's fine. But um, so so the boilerplate isn't perfect. We are still working on it, <laughs> but, but it yeah, still but gets you most of the way there. Absolutely. In terms of getting spun up with Storybook, with Next.js, with a CMS, uh, with Prismic Slice Machine, building out custom types, um, having some nice default styles out of the box, like we didn't even touch on, and, and I I wanted to, but I talked too much. Um, <laughs> touch on, like, this is a pretty nice uh, default Tailwind setup where, like, this this already looks good. It, it, it's, it's not going to take a, a lot of time for me to, like, just get something that looks half decent. This is already a, a very nice setup that I, I don't have to do a, a, a lot of additional work to. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we, you, you wouldn't use some of these things for the footer. <laughs> um, we just wanted to speed through that aspect of it, but maybe I should have spent a little more time on it. Um, link to the web, Google. Oops. And then this is uh, just to the above. About. that doesn't make sense let's do this actually to the about page because this is like the footer link where you would go and link to a page there so let's do that and let's save it and let's be done with it let's be done with all of it because i could just keep tweaking and 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 working on this <laughs> it's fun it's like those kinds of, these kinds of things to like tweak and and develop and continue to build on when it's when it's easy with things like storybook with things like uh sl slice machine and just editing and previewing and i don't know i like tinkering with this stuff there's something about it like almost like lego is where you can continue to like use the building blocks and put things together and create new slices and it's just dragging and dropping things in here there's there's something about that that just feels like lego to me and i can continue to tinker with it and it doesn't feel like work you know Mm. And it's like, um, you never look at something and feel like that's super intimidating, or at least I don't like, I look at stuff and like see it in very small chunks. And I'm like, that's a title. I can, I can add a title to a, to a slice. That's no problem. Yeah. Um, and then it's po possibly that I'll, uh, the like Netflix style, just one more episode. And then three hours later, you, uh, realize it's three. <laughs> and the and site's then... done. <laughs> yeah. <you're> like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I think what you just said is, is like, the paradigm shift that I, I had to go through is like from the bird's eye view, this is terrifying. I can't like, oh my gosh, I have to make this entire site. Where do I even start? How do I how do I do this? There's just so much there. But like like you just said, like it's it's looking at it slice by slice, right? So like he, here's the values slice or whatever you're gonna call this. And then you just have to build this slice. And then you just kinda go, okay, how would I build this? Well, we've got this like eyebrow here. You've got this title, you've got a description, we've got a link and some text, and then we have repeatable mm -hmm. fields with each one having a header and a description. That's And that's it. That's the data modeled. There mm -hmm. we go. Uh, time to go in and uh, build out, you know, like, like build it out in, in next because I just figured out the data. Like <laughs> that's a lot less overwhelming, right? Yeah, exactly. And then... And then figuring that out and going from like this section to um, like a slightly different one, maybe not that one, that one is quite different, but to like a slightly different style, but well, actually all of this data is exactly the same and this data is the same too. It's just laid out slightly differently. Yeah. But that's not much more work to change it from, from this one into this one. And now you have uh, two components that you can do whatever you want with. 
Um, and it like very slowly, but suddenly very quickly builds up your site. Um, and then you and, ship like, that we, on like, our using, client. Yeah. And using boilerplates like this and, and like designs that are built in a way that, that, that lean off of the back of the, the development process means that we can have sites built, like if they're relatively simple in a couple of weeks, even though they seem very complex, because as long as you've got the copy and as long as you've got like things structured in the right way, you can just build the slices and then just dump it, dump it, like put it all together really quickly. That's cool. If you want to add 50 pages to a website and you've got the copy, like once it's built one, like once you built one page, you built 50 pages. It's not much extra effort. That's awesome. Um, we're going to have to have you back on, Dan, to tell us <laughs> how to get clients to give you the content. Because <laughs> that, in my experience yes. at, at an agency, is like, all right, so you're going to have the content by the 15th, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the 15th rolls around, they're like, we don't have it yet, but just build the site. And you're like, <laughs> no, I'd be like, huh? What do you mean build the site? Like, I don't oh, have content. Well. <laughs> I, 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 I need content. And they're like, yeah, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. It's... We're we're working on it over here, but make sure you you build the site. We're like ah, <laughs> <laughs> and then finally you go ahead, you build the site with like Laura Mipsum, and they come back with content that does not match your site at all. And they're like, here, put that in yep. there. And you're like, this this isn't. If it would have been would have been this nice to work. have this before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have uh, had that issue a couple of times. Yeah. But we are, clients, our we love for that you. Tends to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not trying to bad mouth clients. To we try and get the content first. Um, that's it's our, important. That's our resolution. Yeah. yeah, not not to badmouth clients because we <laughs> you you are the reason that we we can build these sites. It's just um, it's such an important part of that whole process. Is like it's yeah. we're 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 not saying we want the content just to be jerks about it. It's because <laughs> we 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 need to see how everything fits in those boxes before before we build those boxes. Right? It's like it mm -hmm. has to. It's 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 so important. Um, it helps. It, it it really does. It really does. Because um, you, you end up doing like the double the work sometimes and then there's delays and it's just it's just not fun. Um, but so skywarddigital.com, right? Uh, skyward.digital. Skyward.digital. Sorry. Uh, these new age domains. I love it. I mean, hey, <laughs> I'm I'm over here rocking front end horse, so don't even <laughs> front end dot horse. Uh, quite quite weird. Yeah. So so this is the current site, still gorgeous. Um, but yeah, you're working on uh, an even more fantastic site. Um, always cool to to see what what you're working on, Dan. Uh, and please follow twitter.com slash Dan. Please follow Dan. How many employees at Skyward out of curiosity? Someone. Uh, we're currently this. at six. Awesome. That's great. Congratulations, man. Yeah. It's going really well. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> fantastic. Um, and I can see why you've, you've got it down to a science. Um, happy clients means you can bring more people on and you can... Mm -hmm build out more sites for more clients. That's so cool. Uh, but yeah, follow Dan on Twitter to uh, absolutely see more of what he's working on. As I said at, at, at the beginning, you're great at sharing your process, sharing um, your mindset about how to get, get clients, how to build sites, how to design sites, why you use the tools that you use. You're very mm -hmm. public about using Prismic and about Storybook and about just... Um, all, all the things. It's, it's, it's very cool to know exactly where you're coming from um, as you continue to build out better and better sites for people. So, highly recommend uh, Dan's Twitter profile, Twitter account, Twitter. Just follow him on Twitter. I don't know what it's called. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna get any of those. I'm just gonna yell at chat. Just follow him. Stop <laughs> asking me questions. Um, and yeah, Dan, thank you so much. Was there anything else that, that you would, would like to plug or talk about or anything coming up that you want to point the chat towards? I can't think of anything. Um, just thank you very much for listening. Yeah, chat, thank you for being here. <laughs> yeah, and, and sorry for yelling at you just like 20 seconds ago. Sorry, chat, I get a little temperamental. It's just, uh, it's a character flaw. What are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> but um, chat, hang in there. We are going to... 
Uh, find someone to raid. Thank you so much, chat. This was a blast. We had lots of new people coming through. Um, yeah, and Dan, thank you once again. We would love to have you have you back to build some more stuff with us, show us how you do pretty much anything else. Honestly, I, I, I think like a, a design uh, thing from you would be great. You you make some very nice looking sites. I was surprised at the beginning to hear that you don't have like a design background because that it, it feels <laughs> like you, you've got some serious skills there. So... Uh, that was super cool. Yeah, no, no design background. <laughs> oh, and Angelo is coming in at the end. Angelo, you got a nice, uh, or, or I mean, the as as nice as I could. Uh, thank you at the beginning. Uh, thank you again for helping out uh, making this um, boilerplate even even nicer, especially with all the libraries that you and Lucy have worked on and put together. Uh, really appreciate your time, Angelo. Good, good to see you, buddy. Um, so yeah, we're going to find someone to raid, hang in there, chat, and uh, we will see you, I believe, on Tuesday. Uh, I don't know what this screen is going to do, because I, I don't think I have anything logged in here. Yep. All right, so I, I just want to test that, but it's going to say so long. We have a show on Tuesday. I don't have it in there yet. I will get it in there, and you will now uh, follow so you're here. Bye, everybody. Bye.